Sage. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. You're listening to one of my kids' recordings. I use them for my intros and, and out music. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, one shot, you know, one night adventures I've been running to give people a chance to either learn or get a game. And all and same for me. I've got an ongoing campaign, but um, it's good to branch out a bit. Um, and the ongoing one's winding down, to, to, be, to be honest. So there'll be a couple of months of gap time before I start up another regular one. Um, tonight's a Tier 1 Adventurers League um, module, like an, a published adventure called uh, The Oubliette of Fort Iron. I don't know if anyone's familiar with it, but it's, it's from one of the older um, seasons. And we are starting off in a tavern, so... Um, uh, and just, you know, chewing the fat, so I think that this is what we can... This is a point where we can sort of introduce our characters, uh, or you can introduce your characters. And just a brief little bit, bit about me, I've, just, I've DM'd a couple of, sesh, of groups, you know, through to 20th, 16th, and now 13th level, um, and uh, some with a mix of homebrew and published stuff. Uh, COVID has sent us off online, and I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence about whether that's actually better or not. Um, it certainly gives a chance to play with lots of other people and, you know, lot, uh, have a big mix. Um, some of you will have played these one shots before and got a couple of the same characters coming forward, but um, I guess a good next move is just to run through each person introducing themselves and, um, you know, what their character's about. So, uh, Grider, I'll get you to go first, if that's all right. Absolutely, that, that's fine with me. Uh, Grydor Ironfist is a mountain dwarf uh, cleric of the Water Main. Uh, it is his sole purpose in life to swing his mighty war hammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, in the fear of battle. <laughs> What's your backstory? I swing a hammer. Okay. I swing a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> but your your class is straight cleric, is that right? Yes, just right. straight cleric. Yep. Okay, cool. And <coughs> Torm, if I recall. Torm the True. Yes, Torm uh, the True. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Federico, um, do you want to tell us a little about? Yes. This character uh, I made, who, who I made up in two seconds. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, uh, his name is Kiral, and he he's not, he mastered archery so that he could fight from a distance. Yep. And but because of that, he never he never really he's very bad at interacting with people. He's just very anxious, let's say. So, so he he's basically a, a medieval version of a nerd. <laughs> yeah, that okay. And that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, and is it Laika or Laika? How do you pronounce how do you pronounce that? Laika. 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 Okay. Do you know? Um, Laika is a. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um. Laika is a wood elf ranger whose main driving force is her wanderlust and love for knowledge. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, as a ranger, I, I'm, I'm going to assume that you guys have travelled together for some time. Um, do you? Are you more of a bow type ranger or a um, melee? Uh, both or a bit, bit of both, or. Uh, she can fight close up, but I think she prefers to do a long distance. Okay, so I might find we've got a couple of uh, bit of um, uh, uh, shooting gallery uh, with yourself and uh, uh, Federico. Um, <laughs> and because uh, yeah, I think Federico is a straight fighter, so geared up towards the arcane archer, um, 
whereas you're a ranger, so have that more, um, one, like you say, wanderlust, natural bent. Um, and Tina, I see you've uh, made it. We're, ju we're just going through introductions like we did last time. Um, so I think most people you know, and you just caught the, the end of uh, Laker's introduction as a um, wood elf ranger. Um, uh, Yevon, do you want to tell us about yourself? Yeah, sure. So Zashir is a half-elf wizard, and uh, he is mostly interested in uh, discovering why some spells can be used to buy some people but can't be used by other people and he strongly believes that uh, any form of divine intervention is simply a natural phenomena ah okay all right the, the skeptic all right um and what race uh, half elf okay you look very startled there looking at that icon piercing um and... yeah he tends to have the to face always okay and um uh tina can you hear us are you in discord can you hear me yes we yep. can yeah i'm here now sorry okay today. cool no worries <laughs> yeah so i'm playing trust she is a, a tiefling sorcerer um I don't know. Yes, she's um, in her past. She's been lied to about how she grew up um, and stuff. So she's on kind of a journey to find any sort of truth in the world. Um, and she's also I don't remember exactly what it's called. Um, draconian. Oh yeah. So every sorcerer, um, the reason they 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 have that innate magical ability is because of some sort of um, natural. Uh, bloodline that they have. Um, warlocks have a patron, so someone who sort of sponsors them, but sorcerers just um, naturally gifted somehow. And sh um, uh, trust is uh, dra uh, somewhere back in a lineage, there's dragon ancestry. Um, I, I think that's where the gold scales and the fire breathing and um, tougher, yeah. tougher than your regular tiefling. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, unless there's anything else, I might jump straight into a bit of an introduction to what's going on. You're probably um, coming in coming in cold at this point. Um, you, as a group, we're going to presu presume that you've travelled together. You've got a little bit of money in your pocket. Um, you are somewhat experienced. Um, but just beginning your journey in, in, through as an adventurer, um, even though you might have some years of uh, experience behind you, um, you know, meaning, you know, particularly for the elders in the party, you've been around and been an adult for maybe decades, but um, just starting out adventuring. And um, you were operating out of a town on the coast um, in a sort of Mediterranean setting. But this place borders on um, the great grey land of Thar, which is sort of a beast man, ogre sort of land, a bit of a wasteland. And there are um, some outposts of civilization sort of protecting from incursions from those um, larger humanoids, larger bestial humanoids. And uh, you've, you've traveled together northeast from this city um, to, to the, yeah, to a village um, of uh, Point Iron, it's called. Um, and for reasons of your own, I guess you're, you're, you've. Um, I won't presume to say why you, what your motivations are, but uh, you've joined this expedition to the mines, um, and uh, have been answered the call to the fort um, by someone who's called Leonor, um, who's a granddaughter of Aurora, um, a famous adventurer. And um, as things often do, you're uh, in a tavern in Fort Iron, which is a small village, but there is a um, larger dwarven category. Uh, what's it called? Um, castle. Um, 
Yeah, so this you're in the the tavern you're in is called the Tower Shield. It sits across from Fort Iron and is heavily trafficked by um, uh, dwarven soldiers moving through the crowd. Uh, and you manage to find a a, um, a table. Uh, you've you've gathered here with um, Lilianor, Lali, and um, uh, she comes over. and says, "I'll I'll get the drinks. Don't worry. I'll, I'll bring it over. Grab a seat." And uh, I'll just put Ivana over here. Corral, do you want to take a seat? Um, uh, um, sure. Okay. Yeah. The party's in the top right if you want to sit with your, your pals. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a s- Corral. He's just that, that nervous, okay? <laughs> that, that eight charisma is shining through. Um, uh, you're a social butterfly. Um, where are we? <laughs> ah, yes, here we go. So she comes over with a tray and says, Ah, oh, great, oh, great, I'll shuffle over. And she sets a, a tray of cheese and um, some sort of, some sort of, not dips, it's probably, probably gruel, but something that you would dip the um, uh, bread in and, and a round of drinks for everyone. She's a uh, tall, uh, thin, human woman, long brown hair, um, uh, smiles a lot, seems um, like nothing phases her at all. And uh, um, she has a, has a um, uh, just these, these eyes that seem to look into you. So it's, it's hard to not feel like she knows more than she's letting on. Um, you, you've, in your recent chats with her to, to get to this here and when you first met, um, you had an idea that she's got uh, you know, a sound business sense um, running the family business and that she's probably not, not easily tricked. So she sits down and says, oh, I'm so glad you answered my call because I've got a deal for you. I was going through my grandmother Aurora's things um, and I think I've found some, something that's going to make us all rich. And uh, she un- unrolls a um, a map of the of the old dwarven mines on, in front of you, and uh, puts a couple of goblets on the corners and a dagger on the other one. Um, if anyone wants to, uh, this might jog someone's memory. If you um, wants to yes. make, do an intelligence no. check, no. oh, he, probably. Yeah. Probably history. Anyone who's got proficiency in history can have a roll. I'm going to make a roll. Okay. Yeah, I think Leica's going to double check it too. Yeah, okay. Not 20. Oh, hey, okay. So, um, Yevon, now I, I see your name in roll 20 come up, but I'm going to have some trouble mashing that up with who is what character. It might take me a little while. So Yevon is... I just need to make this Zashir. Zashir. Oh no, like her I can see because I'm, I'm using people's PC names, so that's, that's good. Got it. Um, okay, yeah, so we've got a natural <coughs> 20. So you, um, thinking back to your knowledge of history, you're probably still around at this point, so it's not really history for you being an elf. Um, uh, Aurora, the name, was a famous um, mage and was a member of a party that um, took on Orcus not too far from here uh, many years ago and um, was successful, amassed great wealth. And um, so this is her, I think, great grandmother that we're talking about here. Um, so that, that's what that's what that um, history check was just about. Just bear with me, I'm just unlocking my phone. Okay. Um, yeah, so she says she's got this map uh, of the old dwarven mines below Fort Iron. Um, it was made just before the Duergar, the Grey Dwarves, invaded. And um, so it's, it's of Duergar uh, manufacture. Well, you know, they, they created the map. And there's a mark on it denoting some sort of secret treasure um, in a oubliette beneath, beneath Fort Iron. 
and uh, apparently it, um, it, it leads to a lost vein of gold. So if we can locate this, um, she's uh, willing to give you a, a cut of the um, uh, profits from locating and, and then mining this vein of gold. She says she's managed to already negotiate access to the mines. Uh, she seems very officious. She's sort of ticking off things in her, in her mind as she goes along. I've managed to negotiate access to the mines, um, but I'll need you to check for the map's accuracy by going into the mines and finding the gold. So down this oubliette. Um, right. If you find it, yeah, you'll, you'll be wealthy. Um, now, for most of you, you've got no more than... Um, you know, 10 gold pieces, maybe 50 or so to your name. Some of you might have a bit more stashed away from, from recent adventures, but, uh, um, you know, she's willing to share the proceeds of whatever gold you find. This could be the story. Just, yeah, go for it. Uh, just to clarify you, she said that uh, she got this map from her grandmother, yeah? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, may may I ask her uh, does she know if she knows uh, how her grandmother came up with this map? Um, she th believes that she it, she recovered it from defeated foes. Um, so uh, Duagar were one of the races, one of the one of the peoples that um, she went toe to toe with in her group. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, yeah, it seems like she's arranged everything. She's arranged access to the mines. Um, she's got the map, um, and she's unless anyone's got any more questions, uh, she's looking to you to see if you agree or not. Trying to read you for uh, whether people's eyes are sparkling or or not. Uh, I, the, the, yeah. the dwarves' eyes are sparkling. Ooh, okay. Shame. <laughs> Yeah, will there any be anything dangerous down in the mines? Well, that's why. Very scary. She, yeah, so that's why she's um, thinking to conscript capable adventurers. Um, you get an idea that she's, you know, capable broke adventurers. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's why she's not just sending miners down there now, or even just soldiers. Uh, a specialist team with a range of skills. I ask at uh, what time we should uh, go well, to the mine. Okay, she sort of looks out the window and says, well, it's um, late afternoon now, so um, you could go straight away. Um, but uh, if you want to get a decent rest, um, she'll pay for your accommodation overnight. That will be no problem. Um, yeah, it should be a fairly, fairly quick expedition like it's not a number of days it should just be within one day in and out looking at this map it's not that far mm. okay i ask if i can i buy some rations here ah yes just in case yes yeah, she I says she wrong. gives you the name of a contact where you can buy um goods from the player's handbook um and uh, not get ripped off. So she gives you a note, and it ba basically it means you're still playing, um, you're not getting a discount, but uh, you're not gonna need to haggle or possibly get charged more just because this is a more um, isolated outpost right on the edge of Thar, so prices generally are higher than normal. So you've got yourself mm -hmm. a little, a little um, uh, card with her, sign her mark on it. Um, she says, if you agree, I've got some other um, assets which I can provide to you, which should help as well. Okay. And she's just, just checking how much ration, rations cost. Can I ask, is there, is there any reason that her great-grandmother didn't go down to the mines herself? 
Um, well, she's fabulously wealthy, and so, or she was fabulously wealthy. So, um, uh, upon retiring, you know, started the family business, and they're guest traders of some some description. Um, but it's a more mundane prof mundane profession, um, and she's got uh, loads of things in her. Um, uh, you know, in in her uh, cellar, or in the attic, whatever it was that, she, that that she's been going through, she just found it and stumbled across it. And it could easily have been something her grandmother had even forgotten, or not appreciated that it was um, potentially marketable. Okay. Hmm. So if anyone else has got any other questions, I um, she's just looking at you, sort of keen to find out what the um, what you're thinking. It sounds like you're up for it, seeing as you're based on your line of questioning. Yes, I'm pretty good at it. Yeah. She says there's no real. I agree. Okay. She says there's no <laughs> real rush. If you wanted to have a long rest. She's familiar with spellcasters and how they operate, and says if you know if the spells that you have ready or memorized or whatever whatever it is that you do um, aren't appropriate for uh, um, underground activities, festivities, then um, maybe rest on it and change in the morning. What say you? I said that I'm ready to go now, but uh, I want to go to her contact and to buy some rations. Okay. Uh, uh, do they also sell a uh, a war pick there as well? A war pick? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, you can get this is uh, basically from the weapons list, not a mining thing, but it could double as both. It double as both as yeah. a. Pickaxe as well as that. So, yeah, definitely. You can um, you can get a, a a war pick for the standard price in the player's handbook. Yeah. Do you want me to look it up? It'll take me not long. Five gold. Yeah. Okay. Got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, I will buy you rations for two days, five silver pieces each. Okay. That's one gold, right? Okay. Oh, can I ask how how many how much ra rations would you recommend? Yeah. Um. Oh, I would I would maybe take right, two yeah, if huh? you wanted to be um, on the safe side. That's that's one gold for two days rations. Mm. Yeah, I buy uh, one two days rations for one gold. That's right. Yep. And that's dry rations. I so. Okay. I have two rations, so I think that should be fine. Okay. Is there anything anyone else wants to do while they're here, or is it or are you just trying to um, go up to your rooms and try and get get some good rest? She says she'll meet you here first thing in the morning um, with an escort. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Are there any are there any like traps on the mines or? Uh, she has no idea. Bear in mind, this is more underneath. Yeah, this is more underneath the mines, uh, underneath the fort. So, uh, at some point, these Juaga, their mining activity must have then hit um, this this oubliette, which um, wasn't known to the people, even the dwarves in the fort. Okay. Okay. So I assume there probably are some, just because that's all. Well. Yeah. There's traps everywhere. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, so in that case, um, she pays for you for a couple of drinks and a meal um, uh, over the course of the night. Um, early evening, uh, quite a few dwarves come into the um, tavern with a few humans as well. Um, you can tell from the size of them that maybe some of these humans are, have ogre 
ancestry as well, so Ooh. half ogres, if you were to go to a, a particular race, um, a particular ancestry. So, um, yeah, that's just the, the general makeup of the um, population of the area. Um, okay, so heading back to your heading back to your rooms, you um, uh, next morning. Then the, the evening's uneventful. You get a good night's rest, and uh, if you need to change spells or if it's relevant, um, you can do that now. Uh, you're at full hit points or f full health, full rest, and over breakfast. Um, well, it's at the same map, so same place. We assume you get the same table. You're having a, a final non-rations meal, and uh, Lali. Lali <laughs> I'm struggling. The Leonor um, pulls out this large framed backpack onto the table and says, um, you know, you can never be too prepared. And so I've um, prepared this back, this pack for you of additional gear, which may help. Um, assuming that one of you is willing to carry it or you might want to split it up over your, over your, um, over the group. And what it contains is a crowbar, no, it's a dungeon, a dungeoneers kit. Um, so when you all create your characters, you pick what pack you have, you know, alchemist, whatever, adventurers. So this is a Dungeoneers kit. Comes with a hammer, pitons, 10 torches and a tinderbox. Um, there's 10 days of rations in a pack that you could split amongst you as well. Uh, spare water skin, uh, filled with wine so that it doesn't go off as much. 50 foot of rope. Um, there's a bit of extra stuff in there. There's a healer's kit and a vial of holy, wa holy water. Um, she reaches into another pouch and pulls out um, five vials and says, these are potions of uh, healing. And um, you can each have one of those to take with you. Uh, there's a block and tackle, um, a climber's kit, a lamp, a vial of oil, two sacks, another, um, uh, another um, skein, I think it's called, of rope, hemp and rope, and there's a small shovel. It says, uh, this, is, this is some additional materials I put together in case you want to take it with you. I guess we'll take them all and uh, uh, I believe someone who has the highest carrying capacity should take take the whole backpack yeah I, I don't know who that is i think there's no big uh muscle types amongst uh, you <laughs> uh, just, just to make it everything easier yeah uh, my carrying capacity is 225 pounds okay um so if, if that beats everyone else i'll take the backpack definitely beats me okay yeah okay. <laughs> So we've got the uh, the dwarf completely laden down, um, and all of these sort of life dexterous. The the rest of the party is all sort of, you know, just striding their way along as as Grindor slugs slugs through, with this great great big backpack on his back. <laughs> no one say mush. <laughs> um, okay. <coughs> Uh, so that was a Dungeoneers uh, pack, was it? Yes. Um, uh, actually, I'll paste it into the um, chat. The yes, roll, please. The Roll20 chat? Might be. Yep. Yep. There. Okay. So, uh, I've got the Dungeoneers pack. Um, I might be able to fit one more thing, like the um, climbers kit. Yep. Does anyone else want to take the holy water and healers kit? And I guess you can all add the potion of healing each to your character sheets. I okay. think Leica like, can take the healers kit and the vial of holy water. Okay. And I'll add uh, one potion of healing to my. Equipment. Okay. How do you add it to your character sheet? 
Um, now, is yours in Roll20 or D&D Beyond? Roll20. Okay. So, uh, let me just look. Journal. Who am I looking there? Lyca? Trust. Trust. Okay. So, I'm going into character sheet. Where's your gear? Core. Bio. Ah, there. So if you look at your character sheet, in the middle column mm -hmm. on the core, there's all of your items and gold and treasure, and there's equipment. And you can just, I think, click on the plus, and that adds a new row into your equipment, so you can just put it in there. Oh, okay. And you, you just write the word, write the word, basically, or what? Or how do you do? Uh, then just type in whatever it is. So hit potion of healing, or you can just put in uh, dungeoneers pack because we we can then look up what that all is. Yeah. Okay. Um, Should I take yeah. one as well, or? I think everyone's got a potion, so she she more handed those out so that you've all got the means to either heal or heal one another. Plus, we've got a cleric, so yeah. <laughs> so as long as you don't get swallowed by a pebble worm, we're all cool. Um, anything else? Anyone want to do? You know, in the in the morning. Nothing from me. Okay. Or 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 anything, you know, chatting or anything with any of the locals in the um, in the pub as well. Okay. Uh, well, I guess uh, I take all of my belongings with me, so I don't think that. So I simply go to the owner of. With the tavern and say that I freed up my room. Okay. All right. Is there anyone in the, Is there anyone in the tavern who knows anything about the mines? Um. Yeah. You could. You could ask. Um. Ask around. Um, oh. You'll, okay. You. You can roll a a corral, Mr. Charisma. You can roll a charisma check. <laughs> a charisma check. Okay. Yeah. If, if anyone with uh, oh, someone, yeah. <laughs> where are we? Seventeen. Yeah, we, we need a good stat. <laughs> oh my god! Even with your minus one, you got a seventeen. Okay. <laughs> we need to be very right? All right. So everyone, <laughs> okay. you you manage to scrounge every piece of information you can out of out of people about uh, about the mines. Uh, someone says uh, the mine. Oh, they pull lots of iron out of the ground. <laughs> they have for years. Um, better us than uh, be better the dwarves than, than the, than the greys or the, the humans you know they say this is there's gold somewhere in that mine but no one's ever found it truthfully I think it's a myth probably just to keep the miners digging harder um, another person uh, says you hear stories of the Duergar found um, Stories about the Duergar they found here when the when the uh, force arrived from the from the city. Um, what was once a host of vicious grey dwarves was somehow turned into only a few dozen starving wretches, ranting about fertile earth that grows in the deep. Um, that's what happens when you go too long without seeing the sun. I think I reckon. And uh, if, uh, if I hear that, uh, uh, I want to ask. Uh, if uh, there is someone who legally owns the mines? Uh, no one has, legally owns the mines, but because they're over Fort Iron, um, the, um, the dwarves of Fort Iron um, uh, guard it, I guess, or hold custody of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, one other thing that was that was odd asking around about the mines is someone says well that's odd everyone's talking about the mines there was someone asking you're not the first to be asked about these mines you know just yesterday morning there was a masked man masked robed man with uh, a little fella 
a gnome wearing goggles. They both had hoods and they came to the tavern asking around. Um, the little one had a backpack as well, just like that one, the one that that dwarf's got, and he had a bunch of shovels, and they they both smelt strange, like sort of rotten fish. Mm. Okay, you. Uh, uh, what color yeah. were their hoods, <laughs> just in case we find them? Um, what color were their boots? Oh my god! Hoods. Oh. They were hooded. <laughs> Um, uh, brown. Okay. Um, do they, do they know where he could be, where they, where they went? No, I was curious. I, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. It's just that they look, they're a funny looking couple. Uh, okay. one guy very secretive with a, with his hood pulled low and another, uh, gnome carrying around a bunch of shovels. With goggles on. Okay. Can I ask Laleonor if there's any potential competition for the gold in the mines? Um, yeah, do you want to roll a, uh, a persuasion? Yep. You're not really persuading her, I guess, but it's... Okay. Um, I think I will actually come. Boom. All right. Uh, 21. Yeah, let's so... Let's hold us here. It's so, called scary order to combat. Yeah, she says that she's not aware of any direct competition for, and no one should be aware of this map that she's got. Um, but it doesn't mean that there won't be. Um, there could be other miners coming from below. There could be others that are or happen to be aware of this. But it's not like she's actively in a race with anyone else. And you... Um, believe that she's being genuine or you, you think that she's, she's being genuine when she says that mm, mm, okay yeah i'll just in case roll insight okay what yep and um, yevon is uh certain he doesn't know <laughs> okay yeah. All right. Um, any other? Uh, does anybody else like while um, uh, Corral's doing that? Does anyone want to be asking around for other topics or other other things? No. Okay. There's one cur one curious event. Um, let's see. Uh, Laika, you're um, pretty perceptive and when you're walking around outside the, um, the you know, in the village, um, it's pretty, pretty muddy, it's a bit of a backward, backwards sort of village, uh, backwards town, um, but you, you turn around and you, you know, there's a few people in the street and some, um, what do you call it, uh, beasts of burden, you know, oxen and things pulling carts. Um, and you spot this, you know, like a probably a goat hopping around here and there. But you look over your shoulder and you spot the same goat and it appears to be looking at you. And uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, as you're looking over your shoulder and you go, oh, well, that's a bit creepy or weird. The goat sort of, t its head sort of cocks to one side, looking at you more like a, almost like a dog does. Um, and this waif of a girl um, that's sort of squatting down in the gutter, sort of picking away at it with a knife. Uh, she's got a torn dress and um, she stands up and looks over at you and then run, run takes a few quick steps over to um, put a, a hand on the goat's shoulder. And they're, they're both standing there looking at you. I'm going to insight into the goat. <laughs> 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 Let's see the true machinations of this goat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's real machinations on my mind. Right? Oh, that's a history, but uh, it doesn't matter. It would be just a, it would be an 11 if it was insight. Okay. 
Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, well, you, your insight is definitely, your spider senses are tingling, as in this looks a little bit odd. Um, and uh, after a few moments of you both just looking at each other, um, <laughs> she starts to walk over towards you. You can see she's got very skinny legs, mud covered, and this uh, black furred goat um, uh, is sort of trotting along at her heel. Uh, trip trapping, trip trapping along on a, at her heel. And uh, but as she approaches, she offers you a wide uh, yellow smile. Um, doesn't look like she do, does a lot of teeth brushing. Um, greetings outside. What's you doing? Um, I'm here for adventure. Why are you following me with this goat? Oh, the goat knows. The goat knows, the goat listens. What does he listen to? He listens to the ground. The ground, she says, what? And she seems to listen to the goat and the goat, it's, you know how goats have that hourglass pupil? Um, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just sort of staring at you, looking, looking with it. it's got its head off to one side, but you can, you, you, it occurs to you that that's the way that goats stare straight at you because um, of the mm. way their eyes are positioned. He says, oh, do you hear the ground? And she, and she sort of, because you, you recall that she was sort of stabbing the gutter with her knife. She says, it screams mm -hmm. when, I, when, when I poke at it. And she sort of squats down and starts sort of stabbing the dirt with her eye. It lives. It's hungry. Oh, OK. <laughs> I think Leica squats down and then like just stares deep, like gets this direct eye contact with the goat and just keeps staring into its eyes trying to figure out like what is happening. Okay. Um, I'm also, I think she's like just gonna like kind of crouch and cry, trying to listen herself to see if she can hear dirt screaming or if this girl's just like crazy. Yes, yes, okay. Um, I think... So what were you, were you thinking an uh, uh, insight to try and read her or read the goat? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think we'll do insight on her. I think the yeah. goat is just, I'm, I'm still staring deeply into the goat's eyes and I'm trying to figure out her. Um, <laughs> it goes too hard to comprehend. Yeah, I can't understand. The eyes are like moving around. Okay. All uh, right. That's, the insight. That's, a, that's only a 13, so. Yeah, okay. Um, she says, I hear it. You should hear it too. It's not happy. Its head hurts. The earth, the ground's head hurts from all the scraping and scratching that all the, they all do. You shouldn't go into the grounds. Its, it's belly's angry. It's got your yucky... Your Where are your parents, little girl? It's got yucky water. You should take, you should take good water if you go into the grounds, belly. All right, I'll, I'll take your advice. I'll bring, I'll bring my own water. Okay. Stay hydrated. Yeah, okay. Stay hydrated in the cavern. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think Leica is probably still just sitting there in the dirt, and she probably starts poking the dirt too. Okay. Um, and uh, she sort of gets up after a little while and, and sort of... Uh, taps the goat twice on the shoulder and it looks over its shoulder and just, you know, does its nah. <laughs> and uh, uh, she starts leading the goat away back off down the street and the goat sort of does its, you know, cool trot that they do. And she just looks over her shoulder as she goes and says, Billy wants shiny rock. Find the shiny rock. Bring it to me. Um, and she trots, they, they sort of start trotting off down the road. As the goat is walking away, can I try to do one last check into the goat's uh, soul? Um, you can do an animal handling because you, you've you've okay. tried you've tried insight twice now, and um... that's an eighteen. What the okay. Heck? So finally, you understand the goat. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is a different thing. What you do because you're not trying to do, use insight here. You, this is more about your affinity with animals and reading the animal. Um, and you can tell from that this is not moving or not uh, what you know while she's the one that seems creepy other than the goat just looking at you and bleating every now and then 
um, but it's moving uh, with a purpose that you would think that it's far more intelligent that, than a normal animal would be, a beast. Mm. So whether it, whether it's whether it's polymorphed or um, awakened or or something like that, you wouldn't know. But um, mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely your animal handling tells you that this is not an animal in this normal sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think she goes like it goes back to her the the group where yeah. the group is. Well, one other thing you can tell from this, from the animal handling, is that you believe that the goat is probably blind, even though it was looking at you. Uh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I think that's everyone's little forays into the town before descent going into the fort. Unless anyone else yeah. is volunteering any, any ventures onto the street. Oh. I think Laika just relays all the information she learned. She's like, yeah, there's like a very creepy blind goat that was following me everywhere and a girl who was poking the ground. Okay. And she said, uh, we shouldn't oh. go into the cave, but we're going into the caves. Yeah. Don't go uh, I say, well, these things happen in small towns, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should also just bring just water. Fight. Because the water, I guess, is poison down there, or it's kind of gross. Yeah, your, your uh, sponsor gave you one skin of, uh, a, a wine skin. Why? Okay. Other than that, you've just got whatever's on, on your, in your normal pack, so you've probably got a, one skin of wine or water each. Mm -hmm. um, which normally wouldn't last for days. Um, you've probably got, you've gotten more food than you do water at the moment. Oh. Yeah. I quickly go to the barkeep and ask him to give me, like, two water skins. Okay. So I'll, I'll assume everyone can have an extra water skin and your sponsor will fund it. That's no problem, no problem if you're wanting to take more water for some strange reason. Um... <laughs> Because <laughs> the goat told you. <laughs> Listen, the blind goat. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, the goat. <laughs> okay, so I bought uh, two water skins for four silver pieces. Okay, all right, cool. Okay, so with that, Liliano uh, <laughs> um, escorts you with a couple of guards uh, in Fort Iron. She's um, got all the papers in place and has the um, uh, right of entry and you go into the fort. Um, it's a very military establishment. This is clearly one for defence against incursions from the beastmen of Tha. Um, and uh, you're escorted into the fort, into the main keep, and then you go down a couple of levels into a dungeon um, and go past many cells. There's quite a few of them, so there's probably places where they could have uh, take many prisoners, um, but largely unoccupied. Probably more for prisoners of war or to keep people that they've captured in from raids and things. Um, but there's not been any in recent times. Um, uh, then um, you descend into an area where the um, dungeons meet the mines. And um, again, that's uneventful, but um, some dwarves escort you. And whatever deal that uh, La Leonor has struck with the local military has gotten you past all the guards and the miners direct you through tunnels that are no longer part of the active mine. And um, with a wave, um, she parts company and your group moves into the abandoned portions of the mine. While we are going through the old tunnels, uh, can I use perception to see if there are any strange marks there? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll assume that someone or the rest of the party helps you. And so what we'll do for that, because it, not everyone in the party can roll, is you can roll with advantage because something that you might miss, they might not. Uh, I mean, also as a dwarf, um, I've got 
the stone cunning um, thing, which okay. is whenever you can make a history check related to stonework, uh, you can set proficient in the history skill and double your proficiency bonus. I, I okay. mean, I could roll for that if you want as All well. Right. Um, yeah, you can do a history roll, um, of, uh, but uh, for uh, Yevon, I think um, that was more of a perception, just keeping a, keeping an eye out as you go. Yeah, I just made the roll. Okay. Yeah. So the so what? from your perception roll, everyone having a having a bit of a gander. Um, they're dusty and quiet. Um, the smell of moist earth is oddly present, even though there's no source of water that you can see. Um, uh, uh, that that's a twenty-four, by the way, with my yeah. uh, proficiency bonus. No worries. I'll, I'll get to the history one in a sec. Um, okay, so with the history check and your investigations of the mines as you go along, you um, can tell that these have been dug by grey dwarves, duagar, as opposed to the human and dwarven construction that you saw in the active areas of the mine. So you're now in duagar tunnels. Um, so, so very rough cut, is it? rather than the standard straight cut no, of the... it's not no it's not it's still good quality it's just they they wield their picks differently and so you it's that good of a, it's like a tracking skill but you're seeing how people you know like how wide their pickaxes are and how deep a gouge it makes um mm -hmm. the rest of the party's perception um, other than uh, is that there's been there's a great deal of dust and these tunnels have clearly not been desert, disturbed for many years and you also don't find any footprints of humanoids um, or subterranean animals in this part of the mine now I don't have a map of it it's it's not relevant for this part but you're effectively following her map now that leads you through these Duagar tunnels to this oubliette Eventually you, get to, eventually you get to the spot on the map, um, you come to a, a, a dead end tunnel and there's a pit at the end of it. Um, there's a faint breeze and a smell of fresh earth coming from the, from, coming from the pit. You've travelled for more than an hour. Um, the pit's carved into an irregular pattern with round edges. And there's a large iron ring embedded into the wall above the pit. So for, you know, I had to go and look it up, what an oubliette was, but um, in dungeons, if you imagine um, uh, a large uh, dungeon cell that people are, are put into, um, an oubliette is a dungeon beneath a dungeon. So if there's a trap door, um, it's sort of like a, a champagne bottle shape. So there's a trap door in the ceiling it opens going straight down and then goes into a large, you know, a chamber, a, an oubliette, which is like a uh, prison, but it's pretty much impossible to get out of and it's not intended for anyone to ever escape from it. Are there like uh, any signs on the, on the trap door? Any what? Any oh, there's, no, there's no trapdoor here. This is just a um, a, uh, a a round hole in the ground with a ah, with a okay. ring with a ring in the ceiling above it. Can we see the bottom of the pit? Um, sh 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 yeah, it's close to yeah. You can. So uh, <laughs> this is worth noting. Does anyone? not have dark vision because you will just need to know that someone's carrying a light source we've got a wood elf tiefling dwarf half of uh, has the dark vision and i have a light spell so if there is a small stone i can light yeah. it up and throw it down okay or, or i could throw a torch down there yep <laughs> yeah i have that vision so uh, okay so uh, we, if you if you're only relying on dark vision um, you still get disadvantage to the perception checks. You can still see the shape of rooms and things, um, 
but it's it's still not as good. So you can get by, um, but you probably, if you're inspecting as you go along, you probably need a light source. Um, okay. Um, can, can can I light up a torch and see uh, and inspect it? Yep. Yep. Uh, the, the light from the torch won't shine to the very bottom, but I think who was it that had a light spell? A cantrip. I have it. Okay. Right. Sure. Am I using it? So if you yeah. chuck chuck light on a rock or something, other, like, other like any small stones around, yeah. lying around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Lots of debris. I take uh, a stone and uh, use my light spell. So it's a cantrip, so it does not take up any spell slots. No. Okay. All right. So that lo that shows you that the bottom of the um, tunnel going down is forty feet down. I say, if you want to go down there. Hang on, sorry. Um, Tina, what was that? A rope. We can just climb down. I'm just going to draw you a bit of a picture. Oh. Freehand. Oops, there it is. It's a very bad picture, but this is you guys at the top. There's a ring. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're standing there, so, there's a hole in the ground, there's a ring in the ceiling, and there's this hole, and you can tell it opens up and drops down quite a long way. Um, how high is that ring in the ceiling? Oh, only 10 foot, 10 foot. You can reach it with your hands. Well, dwarf can't, but... <laughs> oh, you're true. Yeah. Um, I, only reason why I was going to uh, say why we tie a rope to it um, so we can uh, go down, yep. basically. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, right. sounds good. Okay. Okay. So tie a rope on, throw it down, and who's going to be first? Who's the climber? It'll be acrobatics or athletics? Uh, I've got athletics. Who's that, sorry? Uh, uh, Grydor has athletics. All right, yep. Ooh. Okay. Uh, where are you, Grydor? So you end up down the bottom of the pit. Just gonna move these okay. other guys out of the way. Um, I'll, I'll go next. Okay. Um, I roll acrobatics. Yep, where you go. <laughs> Natural toilet. <laughs> All right. So I, so I, I, I like, I like, do I go crazy? You just go not that sure. Okay. That's totally not. Sorry. Oh, it's Kiral, was it? Yeah. Uh, there, so, Corral, you sort of okay. Cirque du Soleil your way down? <laughs> it's okay. Who's next? Is there any way you could cushion my fall? Definitely not going to be pretty. If you drop? Yeah. Um, I don't have any spells for that, yeah. sorry. Probably, prob probably. Uh, let's see. Well, we can ask uh, Carol to catch you if you fall. Yep, guess that's the best uh, bet. Uh, I go, uh, I come to the pit and uh, yell, Carol, uh, be ready to catch people who fall down there. What? <laughs> so I go, what? Jeez. Uh, okay. And I Just up, like, eight. Oh crap! Oh crap! Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll go for it next then. You can have advantage. You can have advantage. Is it acrobatics or athletics? Um, you can either use your strength and just muscle your way down, or if you're dexterous, you can try and um, 
you know, use the rope, wrap it around your foot and whatnot to take your weight and, and use acrobatics instead. Okay, I'll try acrobatics. Okay. Nice one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Trust. More so, you go, because we'll put on a performance later. Yeah, and, yes. and I just really say a relief, like, oh, okay. I go next. Okay. With advantage, what are you going to do? Acrobatics or athletics? Uh, acrobatics. Okay. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. I think you fail. Yeah, can you roll a, um, a D4, just a D4? Like slash roll D4. Uh, me? Uh, um, yeah, Yevon, Zashir. Okay. So what happens is the point at which you fall, you're you're is you're here, so you uh, uh you only drop uh ten feet, but that's enough to give you five points of damage. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, Corral. If you do an athletics, uh, athletics is strength. You might be able to absorb some of that. Uh, uh athletics or strength. Yeah. Is there the same answer so whether? <laughs> okay, no, you don't. Um, uh, so, like, uh, like he, he begins falling, and like I miss him by like two centimeters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're staying in the standing <laughs> in the wrong spot oh, with your I take... <laughs> in the wrong spot. <laughs> but you. So I take uh, five points of damage. Yes. That's, yeah, that's right. Now I'm not sure. Uh, Laker Laker was just away from keyboard for a moment, so. To get things moving, I'm just gonna. Oops. Move all this jibber jabber out of the way. Grab everyone. Copy, and we'll move on to the next map. Okay, you are now in the oubliette. The bottom of the oubliette, you can, you can still smell this moist earth smell rising from the ground. Um, and the ground is not wet, so it's a strange sort of smell. Um, the floor slopes noticeably um, towards its centre, so it is sort of bottle shaped. <coughs> Uh, and rounded, more probably more like a baseball bat sort of shape, you know, long with, and rounded at the end. But not so steep as it would hinder your movement if you moved around in this cave. Um, yeah, so what, what I'd like to do, it, so this here in the centre, yep. is that a, a hole going down, is it? No, that's more, that's more though to represent the hole above you. Ah, okay, so that's the whole above us. Yeah. I would like to try to dig the ground to see if there are if there are any holes uh, under the like under this layer. Okay. Um, like yeah. look for the source of the yeah, moist okay. smell. So digging down, oh. you can tell that the dirt here is very rich and fertile. Um, quite odd for it not being topsoil. You're a long way underground at this point. You've gone through a couple of dungeon levels, through some mines, but it's fertile earth. Um, and, uh, and, and is loose, so fairly easy to dig. But you know, you dig down, you know, 40 centimeters or so, or even, you know, a foot and a half. And it's not like there's anything in a stone or wood or anything directly beneath you. That's just with a minute or so of digging. <clears throat> okay. I'd like to look around the walls, see if there's ways, any passageways leading anywhere out. Okay. Uh, so trust, can you roll a investigation? So this is now searching for something, not noticing. Okay. All right. Um, 
11. Okay, you do find um, that there's a stone in the floor um, just covered over lightly with um, loose soil and uh, uh, you uncover it. It's fairly smooth and, and round like a wheel sort of shape. Can I pick it up or is it like set in the um, No, you sort of slide your fingers down the sides. It looks like it goes down a fair way. Do we recognize what the stone is or? Um, uh, no, it's pretty, pretty, pretty solid, about three feet across. Um, a, a question: If the can we check the map to know where we should go? Or? Well, this map led to this oubliette, so you're now searching. You're, you're now down the place where you were supposed to go, and the intent now is to search for the vein of gold. Okay, but like, are we, do we are we supposed to just start digging at random, or are we do we have a plan? Uh, your sponsor didn't really know what the intention was from here. Well, we didn't think this through, did we? <laughs> I, I would like <laughs> to check uh, that uh, stone that can be pushed down and see if I can push it down with my mage hand. Okay. Um, do you want to do a strength check? See how much pressure. Oh, mage hand's got a finite amount of strength. Um, so the mage presses on it, um, and the stone doesn't move. But you do know, I think it's 15 pounds maximum that you can do. Uh, let me check. Mage hand. Uh, 10 pounds. 10, okay. Um, I'd I'll, I'll, I'll like to... Um, do, do that, but just with my own hands. Yep. To give, give it a, a bit more. Give it a bit of an oomph, a bit of a shove. Yep. Can you roll? We can uh, all do it together. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Strength check. It's it's big enough that okay, um, right. you can combine your strength. Uh, what is your strength, Grindle? Uh, it's a fifteen with okay. a plus two modifier. So. Okay. Um. And who's, what's the strength of the people who can help? Eight. Well, eight. My strength is eight. Did I hear an eight? Yeah. That's trust. Two, yeah, two eight. eight. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe I'll sit this one out. I'll <laughs> kind of stay over here. So. Okay. And Cheer you guys on. Kiral's out. Zashir, what's your strength? Well, my strength is eight. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, I guess it comes to me. I'll okay. go them because I have it. Uh, yeah. At least like it has a twelve, so. Okay. Never mind. Let's go here. Uh, okay. Could so... you ping ping where the where this stone is? It's in the middle. It's just in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll. Uh... Okay. And okay. So with the combined fifteen and twelve. It starts to shove, and eventually, with both of you pressing on it, it just slides and grunts and, and shifts into the ground. Um, as the rock's depressed, um, the whole room uh, shudders like an earthquake, and uh, for several seconds, you're all thrown to the ground, unable to determine which way is up as you bounce off the walls. So it's almost as if you're in this cocktail shaker and someone's shaking it about. You're not taking any damage, because like I said, it's, it's uh, loose earth. The problem, um, aside from the disorientation, is the all this loose earth, loose earth beneath you starts to sort of drop away, and a hole begins to spiral open as this shaft opens. Um, on the on the on the opposite end of the tunnel, like above you, 
the shaft of the oubliette, oubliette seems to start to spiral closed and you start to fall. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> the journey to the center of the yeah, earth. Has, has anyone seen Journey to the Center of the Earth? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> so it looks it looks like um, almost like an organic sort of the, the the shaft above you is sort of pulsing and squeezing shut um, as this this earth forms a spiral and sort of flushes. Um, the, the older the earth, if you, if you think of loose earth when you, or when you bang it, like on a, on a bin or a lid or something, it shakes around just like flour through a strainer. Hmm. Okay. Can I make a history check uh, if I know something about uh, where these things were co constructed? Okay, um, while you're sort of pondering, pondering history, um, you're, you, can, you can in a second, but at this, at this moment you're being sort of um, swallowed by, by earth. Uh, you fall through a tunnel. Um, it's as if you're in quicksand, but it's completely sunk down. Unless anyone's got some sort of feather fall or wants to quickly act. I think Laika's going to take out her bow and arrow really quick yeah. and tie a, if she can, tie a rope around her rope around it and then like shoot it into the air to kind of like grappling hook with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So you, you tie a rope around your bow and arrow and shoot it into the ceiling above you. Um, the neck of the tunnel above collapses on that, on that rope or on that, um, <laughs> on that arrow. And, uh, of course, all of you sort of fall, uh, down, you, you, can't really tell how far because you're sort of covered in earth as it's all sort of, as it's all tumbling more like an avalanche but it's a vertical one um, da, 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 da. can everyone do a dexterity saving throw Okay, so uh, oh. Federico and Grydor, um, you land with a twist and take three points of damage. <clears throat> oh, despite the scratch. Oh, yeah, despite the fall and the tumble, it's not a huge thing because you, you're almost cushioned by the earth as you land. Um, what the hell was that? And you now find yourselves in a level tunnel that only proceeds in one direction. Um, the, I'm just going to grab everyone and move you to another location. Uh, let's see. Uh, paste. Right, I'm just going to uh, reveal a new area to you. And there, can everyone see now where you are? Yeah. Yeah, I can see. Okay, so you're in a sort of muddy circular passage. With one's one um, one passage going off. It feels like you're in a um, one of those compost tum you've just been gone through one of those compost tumblers. Uh, reveal. Okay. <clears throat> so first, uh, I would like uh, once again to check uh, if I read anything about this sort of constructions. Okay. Um, and that was, that was uh, it. I mean, 
There was a history. Yeah, right? I'd like to do the same with my um, my stone stone coming okay. um, ability. So. Yep. So you both have a roll. That's the two for the party, yeah. effectively. Yeah. Okay. So even for both of you, this um, doesn't resemble anything that you've ever heard of. You find yourself in a tunnel moving in one direction. The stones comprising the tunnel that you just fell through grind quickly closed. The narrow tunnel before you is wet and muddy. So all this smell of this humus, this uh, you know fertile soil is wet and muddy and rivulets run down the sides to a spongy floor somewhere under several inches of mud and this tunnel twists out and turns out of sight. Okay. Can I... we see? Sorry? Only with... Can um, we see uh, no, with only, our dark vision only, or are there you can are see there members? with dark vision, yeah. Okay. But, uh, um, I, I'm going to light a torch anyway. Uh, um, who, so is, that, can... is that Grydor? Yep. Uh, um, so, I, uh, uh, red, I say Grydor, wait. I will use my light cantrip to light the torch so we don't waste it. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> I'll just go ahead because this, this smells like a trap. Okay, and uh, who's our cleric? Company. Uh, Grydor is the cleric. <laughs> uh, I after <laughs> Grydor if he can uh, heal up any injured people. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead, I guess. Uh, Grydor also has the highest AC. <laughs> 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 okay, never mind. Uh, uh, should we go down with the uh, the cleric first, or I can, can I scout just... a little bit ahead? Like I can scout a little bit ahead. Yep. Uh, yeah. So um, Lyca, being a wood elf, has good dark vision and can see the shape of the area ahead. Um, do you want to be within the light as you scout ahead, or do you want to be um, just outside it? So you know, sort of like over here in the dark. Yeah, I think she'll be right over here. She's stealthing, yeah. scouting. Okay, can you roll um, a stealth? Uh, stealth? Okay. I'll go around here. Her team. Oh my god. Okay. Oof. We're so I'll go here and I'll have, have my bow in, in hand in yep. case something. Just watch her back. Okay, so even though Lyca's in, um, out of the, the light, the source of the light spell, um, Corral, you can still see her outline. So... Yeah, you, you can basically you, you've got each other's back, and then the rest of the party can see you because you're in the light. Okay. Yeah, it's basically perfect. <laughs> it's basically perfect. I'm just not gonna go wrong, but this is. A, mm -hmm. Yeah, what could go again. wrong? <laughs> the entire the entire mind collapses. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you, well, you game over. Yeah. And <laughs> an ancient red dragon. Um. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you find the mud is um, ankle deep and is spongy. It's considered difficult terrain, so you would be moving at I, half speed unless you've... I'm a natural explorer, so I ignore difficult terrain. Okay, so you tiptoe across, finding the... It also doesn't slow my groups. Have we been traveling for an hour or so? Or? No, 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 this is just, you know, you've only, only gone 20 feet. Got it. Okay. Oh, so keep moving? Okay. Make yep. sure you kind of just keeps uh, keeps uh, trudging along. I'll just keep, if you guys want to keep yourselves moving. Yep, let's keep going. It's <laughs> a <laughs> light. <laughs> They'll never suspect we're coming. They'll never see us. <laughs> oh, this is good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I imagine this <laughs> that really doesn't work this aura. It's like, uh -uh. It's fine, it's fine. 
At, uh, this moment, I would like to check the walls uh, for any writings or markings. Okay. Yeah, it, it looks like it's just been made out of smooth mud. Um, and uh, very easy to pull. Uh, pull. It's, it's still tough, but spongy. Do you hear anything suspicious? No. Do we have a signal from Laika if she is anything bad or if she just uh, brought back? Okay. Um, I, I, I can in theory see her. Okay, just stop there. Just stop there for a moment. Oh, yeah, I think, Hang on. Would you I think Laika like, would like throw up like a sign or something to Kyral? Kyral, yes. yes. Kyral if something goes yeah. wrong, I think that's her. Okay, so we'll just pause there for a moment. Um... Laika, can you roll a wisdom perception? Uh, so perception check? Yeah. Okay. 23? Hey, okay. Nice. You can hear something, not unlike a rolling thing through mud, um, up mm -hmm. a, a, a head. Hmm. I think I uh, signaled that back to Corel. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, 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 I tell everybody that, uh, that, that Laika found something, like, hey guys, uh, Laika, Laika <laughs> said something, I'll go check her out, and okay. I kind of rush. All right. So we'll Maybe we should home. turn off the light. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, I think I, uh, from where, Laika, from where you are, you can see light behind you in the distance. But the tunnel ahead mm -hmm. of you, ahead of you, is dark because you're at a bend. Mm -hmm. um, huh. So the tunnel ahead of you is in pitch black. You can see its shape. Dark vision. Okay. Um, I think I tell uh, Corel that there was. I heard rolling up ahead, and to relay that to the party. Okay. Um, okay. Rolling. Um, rolling towards you out of the darkness. Uh, around. Well, it's not out of the darkness. It's around the corner comes this mm. ball of mud. Can you see, see it? Okay. Oh. <laughs> is it like an avalanche kind of situation? No, no. Or is it it, like a... It's more like a giant, you know, human-sized beach ball, you know, 10-foot-sized ball, oh. Indi Indiana Jones style. I think I uh, back up so it doesn't smush me to death. Well, s stay there for now. Let's do initiative. Oh, okay. It, that's a, like a monster, I guess. So what we do is, I'm just going to clear it. Oh yeah, that's coming. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I think, cool. yeah, rangers have advantage on initiative rolls. Okay. Ooh. So do you know how to do initiative? How to put yourself in the order? Ah, oh, good. We've got Karal, Grindor, Zashia. Yep. Wow. I clicked I can roll again, because I have an A. Okay, that's much better. That's much better initiative. Yeah. It, it makes sense that the three towards the front of the group have the highest initiative. <laughs> yeah. And he's to run. <laughs> okay, I'm just uh, manually doing mine. I'll put them in descending order. Okay, now before we do, before we do I'm just going to go and grab a drink of water for a sec. And then we'll we'll run into the thing. So unless anyone, do you want to just um, we'll kick off in probably just a couple of minutes. Okay. Back in one minute. Good. Um, I, I want to know how it rolls point numbers on on your guys's initiative. Uh, you can go into settings, I think, and you can do like add like something or like something uh, where you can do like a dex thing. Uh, that's that's uh, your dexterity score as the decimals. It's the dex tiebreaker. It's in the settings. If you go to attribute uh, okay. options, yeah. yeah. I, I I use I'm using the D&D Beyond character sheet, so it's just ah. the number. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're using the Beyond Twenty extension, it has similar settings there. Yeah, it does. But um, I've turned that off. <laughs> ah. 
Um, just to you know, you guys, can you guys hear me fine? Mm. Yeah. Yes, uh, but you uh, like uh, stopped for like point one of a second. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm like, can I Indiana Jones and like have my arrow propel off the side of the cave to hit it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, what would you roll I, for? I, that? I, <laughs> I luck, I pure luck. luck. <laughs> Can I punch the vulgar like in Resident Evil? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Can I pray to my god and have it collapse? I know I'm not a cleric and I don't have divine intervention, but... Uh, Can I call my mom and tell them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I convince the monster to leave us alone? <laughs> uh, well, I that's what I would do, but uh, I'm in the back. Yeah, I have 18 hit points and a 14 AC. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to get close to this thing. Uh, Grindor, 24 hit points, 18 AC. Oh my god. Oh. That's you. Two hit points out of seven, 10 AC. Yeah. All I have to do is backhand me and I'm dead. Uh, well, we have healing potions, so we're. If uh, Anthony will allow us, we'll make you swallow the healing potion and you'll be back alive. Yeah. I have cure wounds, but I can't use it on myself if I'm dead. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I have spared the dying. Oh, cure wounds, <laughs> healing word. <sighs> Even prayer of healing. Uh, mm -hmm. If anything, I think I'm over prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I just grabbed a jumper as well. It's a bit nippy, and put logs on the fire. Um, what? It's cold there. Oh yeah. <sighs> right. Um, Laker twenty two point one seven with the tiebreaker. Yeah. What? You're right at the front there. Um, yeah. So what you see is it's clearly sort of a, a humanoid uh, mud monster of some description. Um, it's got its head tucked in and its arms wrapped around its knees and it's rolling. It looks like it, it can it can roll of its own volition and it's powering down the tunnel huh. towards you. Huh. Um, I think Laika's going to prepare her bow and arrow and she's going to probably try to fire at it. Okay. But it's it's over there, right? So I can't I can't boomerang the. Uh, the you um, can you know, the. Where the reason you can see it is because um, you've got you've just got a bead on it. Um, let's see if I get my little ruler thing here. No stepping. So even sort of here, it's sort of cut. So you can just oh, actually probably let's see. It'd probably be a bit easier. Probably that's the point where you would where you would see it. Oh, okay. So yeah. I can shoot it yeah. from the distance. Yeah, I don't can... have to move closer. You don't have to move closer to shoot at it. No. Okay. Uh, also, one question: Are we counting arrows, or are we uh, unlimited arrow stashers? In um, oh yeah, roughly, roughly. Um, uh, if you're going to be burning through loads, then we'll, we'll we can approximate. Okay. So she's going to fire an arrow at it. Okay. She's going to shoot at it. Longbow. Ooh, it's a nine hit. Oh, wait, do I have it? Oh, it's first attack, so I do have... Uh, on your first turn during combat, you have advantage against on attack rolls against creatures that have not yet acted. So that's a 24. Nice. I think I hit Okay, okay so, so you, you hit it, the arrow goes sinking into the mud. Huh. Does 13 damage do anything, or is it just like a... 13 damage. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, it does. Uh, well, it's a bit hard to tell, but um, you, your arrow sinks in halfway into it, and um, let's see. I'll, I'll try and display a little bit more of it. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Oh, 
Yeah. Okay, can you see your health bar there now? Yes. Uh, yeah, so it's a green health bar above it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's about half. Now, you've shot your arrow. Do you only get the one arrow, I presume? Uh, uh, yeah, I believe because yeah. I'm only at second level, I only yeah. get... Two okay. Arrows. It's only gloom stalkers that we get a fur, get a second arrow at yeah. such a low level. I okay. don't have a conclave yet, so I'm just a ranger. Okay. Do you um, want to move, or do a bonus action? Uh, yeah, I think she's gonna back up a little Fair bit because if it's coming towards her, okay. she's lost. I tell, I okay, I tell her, uh, go back to and tell the others. I will call this thing for now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. I think she runs Let back it. and tells the other okay. about the yeah, about I'm, the blood golem. I'm a fire. Okay. Go. Lo so you you can move your full movement rate because of your ranginess. Um, yeah. And I'm just going to scoot you along. So Corral, you've just seen Lyco loose an okay, arrow. So say, hey, there's mud balls coming. You can't see anything at this stage, but you can hear something rumbling down the passage. Okay. So if I move like here, can I see the uh, yeah, so what I'll, I'll move you if you go uh, and you can't really cut this corner You will have to move around just because it's so sharp Okay, but you move you use 20 okay. foot of your move to move 10 feet and now you can see it and if you want to take a shot you can Okay, uh, I'm gonna attack again and with my, with my bow um, Okay, so you hit I'm a class, hit. You okay. hit him class 14 and that hits into it. It looks like um, shooting an arrow at a ball of mud is pretty easy. And you do. Um, it's not. Uh, is, is, that, is that counting my the fighting style? Uh, yeah, so fighting style. Because um, it's. It, I, 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 I tipped it, but it didn't. Let's have a look. If you, ho if you hover over it, you see. Uh, that, that, that just rolled the um, the dice plus three, which is your Dex? uh, dexterity. Okay. Yeah. So it should have done an extra um, two damage. So I don't know why it's not displaying. I, I don't know why it's not displaying. That's okay. Um, oh, I've, yeah. I've taken the extra two off. It's still alive and still rolling towards you, leaving a trail of mud yeah. behind. Oh. It. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna step a little bit back. Okay, it's spent 20 to and get there, right. so you, you, you'll you only get to there with you moving back because of all this okay. mud that you're in. Okay, uh, okay I am my turn. Grindor, you've got dark um, vision. You see Lyca come belting, tiptoeing through the mud. Um, and you can see Corral at the edge of your vision, um, splodging his way around the corner and coming back around. So, so this is all difficult terrain, isn't it? It this is, yeah. Tunnel. Yep. So I can, I, I'm just going to move uh, in front of like uh, right there. Okay. And that's all, all my movement. I'm going to prepare prepare my uh, warhammer. Okay. Do you want to ready an action? Um, let's see. Uh, yes, I will ready a an attack action. Okay. If something comes in in close proximity with my warhammer. Okay. This uh, mud thing. and charges in and slam one two three and slams into corral or tries to um, and let's see natural 20 <laughs> okay so there's there's my first die roll of the game uh, Oh, oh my god. Thank god. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Two, se guys, oh, like it to go. Uh, two sessions ago, the very first dice I rolled was a rogue backstabbing the person at the very back of the party, which would have been Zashir in this case. 
Um, it was just a 2d6 plus a d6 from the from the short sword itself, because it was a, a sneak attack. Natural 20, roll double damage, was double his hit points, insta-kill with the first roll of the game. It was uh, very good. Oh, my God. Um, oh. Yeah, I know. Very... <laughs> But Corral, you're tougher. Than, you're tougher than a first level uh, wizard. Um, so let's hope you can survive okay, this. Take that. Oh my god! You okay. can take this hit. <laughs> who, who thought a giant boulder would hurt? <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Oh. Trampling charge if it moves to a straight line. Uh, can you do a DC 13 strength saving throw? Okay. Oh, oh love Okay, so what happens is it comes blatting over you. Uh, I'll just do this dice roll. Uh, it's a crit, so it does double damage. It does 21 damage. Oh. <laughs> and, it go, and it goes... Uh, Too far. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, my time's over. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, Jesus Christ. Oh. Wow. Uh, da, da. Okay, so that takes it 20. Yeah, all right. Um, it knocks you prone. That's what the so that's what the strength saving throw was for. I'll put I'll put a net on you, and it just rolls straight over the top of you, and then keeps on going, ending at Grindor. Ah. Grindor, you can roll your. Um, uh, did you survive that, by the way, Kiral? Uh, yes, it did. Barely, but it did. Holy moly! Okay. <laughs> um, Grindor. Yeah, lucky point. Can you roll, um, you can roll your reaction and have a whack at it. Okay, so that rolled uh, an 11 to hit. Uh, let me see. Yes, it hit it. And eight points of damage. <laughs> okay, you, you smack it just as it's about to roll over to over the top of you and Laker. And um, uh, it, it just explodes into this ball of mud. Gone. That was a guy to <laughs> um, What also happens is, is, is when you hit it, the, the mud goes flying off. And then what you're left with is probably a, a five foot sphere of rock that you've just split in half. Uh, okay. The... <laughs> The problem that you can hear is out of the darkness another one comes. One, two, three. Uh, oh my god. And it, roll, <laughs> and it rolls over the top of Corral. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Corral, what's your armor? I have misses actually. Okay. Uh, 14. Okay. It doesn't have advantage because I'm prone. Ah, uh, true, yeah. <laughs> 14? <laughs> Does that count? Yeah. Oh, for love of Christ. Fuck! Oh, come on. Okay, so it does nine, <clears throat> dam nine damage to you. Okay, I'm dead. Well, you're, un <laughs> you're unconscious. Yeah. Unconscious. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, unconscious. Too. Yeah. Probably gonna be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Another ball just rolls over. Okay. Um, <laughs> rolling, rolling, rolling. I'll just see how oh far God, that, how far that went. One, two, three, four, and it'll finish there. So what happens is it came down the corridor and went roll over again, and it sort of built up speed as it came, rolled over the top of him, and then slammed into this wall here in the corner. And that's its go. Trust. Can I Trust. shoot a fireball at it? You can. Oh god. That's not oh my god. Uh, oh like, god. It's not a fireball, I don't think. I think it's a flame. Oh, it's fire bolt. Fire that's bolt. right. Okay. A fire bolt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. Seven. Two plus the night, so that's a miss. Did you want to move at all? Um, nope, I'm saying fuck yes. Okay. Zashia. I'm just fucking dying and everybody, and those guys are just yeah. <laughs> 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 Damn, what a Can I use my uh, uh, magic missile on it? Go for it. Automatically hits, just roll your damage. Yep. <coughs> two. All right. Oh, hang on. Uh, that right. Just uh, one missile. Um, magic, uh, mag missile. Doesn't magic missile do three missiles? Uh, it depends yeah. on what level yeah. you cast it at. Will this play it to you? Yeah, here. Yeah, three glowing darts of magical force. Each dart hits. A dart does 1d4 plus 1. So the absolute minimum damage, if you roll three ones, is 3d4 plus 3. Uh, at first level, you create three missiles. Rolled, uh, it rolled just 1d4. Yeah, so just click it two, mm -hmm. twice more. That's fine. Oof. Okay. And uh, it all helps. Yay! Yay! Okay, so eight damage. Uh, I'll just mark that off. Just bear, just bear with me for a sec. I'm just giving it a bar that you can actually see. Uh, say. Okay. So it does a fair bit of damage. Um, uh, mud starts leaking. And uh, I uh, would like to move back. <laughs> like two spaces, if it okay. is possible. You can help me. You have a shield wall in front of you. Okay. <laughs> uh, You're not as squishy as you think. Laker, where you go? Still just in case I will move. Yep. Second round, Laker, you're up again. Uh, would I be able to, do I have to move in front of Gry? No, you, you can shoot past him. I... Okay, shoot... I can, I can shoot past him, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to shoot at the monster. Okay, my There's longbow. So it's a 25 hit. Oh, very good. Damage? Nice. Okay. Uh, longbow, and then post. Oh. So 13 again. Okay. Minus 13. Oh, look at that. Just a smidge of green and, still there. Yeah. And she's also going to attack us. <laughs> okay. Uh, so she's 35 feet of movement because it's not a. Uh, Corral. Okay. You're going to have to. Yeah, I wonder what should I do. Corral, all you're going to have to do a death up. saving throw. Okay. Oh, that's two. That 20. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. I think that automatically stabilizes you. Or is it two saves? I, I think I, I think that's automatic two saves. Yeah, okay. So, uh, oh, I thought you it was automatic save you get one HP. Um, no, it's it's automatic. Uh, I'll check. I think it depends on the rules. Our budgies just come in and said hello. Oh. Uh, 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 let's go. It's not in the player's handbook. Yeah, it'd be the player's handbook that we're interested in. That's if you roll uh, uh, twenty on the, you regain one one hit point. Yeah. Okay. So I'm back. Uh, you're you're prone. Uh, yeah, just, you're prone but conscious. Uh, uh, two, so two rocks roll over me and I'm just like oh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That, can that's, I get back now or? No, that's it? your action for this turn. Um, uh, uh, can I get a, 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 a bonus action or no? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, sorry. No. Yeah, I think that that's you. You shaking your head. <laughs> Spitting out some mud out, <laughs> clearing your nose, getting the mud out. Um, green the reports of my dad were greatly exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's Grindor doing? 
Hmm. I think you, uh, your dreams were of wielding a hammer or something. Wasn't that your goal in life? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I've got a very nice spell here. Okay. That wields my hammer, actually. Okay. Spiritual weapon. All right. So. Uh, you cast you spiritual weapon. Cast, Ro roll to hit. Cast. And uh, that. Uh, that. It doesn't hit. Five. What? Okay, no, that's a miss. <laughs> no. Hmm. I am going to activate my War Priest ability. Um, so I can uh, attack again or heal or whatever uh, it is. I'm going to healing word... Um, Corral? Uh, oh, fr uh, yes, Corral. Our uh, muddy uh, friend. Uh, at, at first level. Okay. Do your, do your business. Uh, yeah, so that is four, heal, four health to you, uh, uh, Corral. Okay. Oh, my God. Uh, four heal, okay. Yep, for for health. There we go. Okay, so this mud ball, um, uh, rather oh. than rolling and slamming into you, it sort of changes shape and tries to thump you, Corral. Oh, here we go again. Um, it hits. What? It hits. Oh no! All that is Please is me roll, rolling. Roll, roll. That's just me rolling two d twenties and picking one. Um, it does another eleven damage. That was useless. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think you're there. Hit points, soak, Corral. Uh, I think yeah. And uh, then it. Uh, Rolls on over to Grydor. <clears throat> Trust. There's a problem with the end. Is that healing isn't worth it? Can I do another firebolt? You can. Yep. Oh. Oh. Another two. You <laughs> oh, rolled. Exactly. You've rolled two twos. <laughs> okay. Do you want to move? Yes, I move back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I don't think I can move far enough to get behind everyone else. No, so that's pretty much it. I'll go. Okay, yeah. Z Zashia. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, will necrotic damage do anything to it? You don't know. Okay. Necrotic is normally um, something that undead-like, but, um, you know, if, it, if this is living, then necrotic damage would work. Okay, then. You're going to get um, your bell out? Toll the dead? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I will try you the chill, chill touch oh. cantrip. Okay. So a glowing it's hand a appears. A glowing hand appears next to this thing and tries to lay a hand on him. You need to roll to hit. Yeah, I'm rolling. That's a one, a natural one. Okay. Yeah. All right. A bit of mixed results this melee. Um, Laika. Uh, uh, can I see it still from here or do I have to move down? Uh, you would have to move the other side of trust. There's a bit of a bend here. Oh, no, you, uh, can, you can see it, but just getting a line because you're both sort of human sized. Yeah. Whereas the dwarf is a bit shorter and you can get a bead on him <laughs> over the top of the dwarf's head. I roll on that one, just shoot him instead. No, um... Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, fire at it with the longbow gun. Yep. 19 hit? 19 hits. All right, uh, 12 damage. All right, once again, this thing explodes into a ball of goop, leaving behind a cracked um, stone. Ah. Oh. And he killed it. 
Okay, can I quickly roll perception to see if any more are going to come barreling down? Uh, you don't hear anything else, so... Okay. Can I check to see if there's sort of magic rock? Like the rocks that are remaining? Yeah, well... See if we'll they're just, like the source of any... We'll just thing. get get Corral doing his death save for now. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my. That's okay. a save. And Grydor, just Grydor. until everything's stable. Well, uh, I'm going to really get him up now. Yep. Healing word at second level. Ooh, okay. Because I'm pissed off with this. <laughs> <laughs> you get seven health. Nine health. Nine oh. health back. Plus nine, essentially, right? Um, no, yep. you want, you're saying minus six, but that's not quite right because you don't go to minus six. So you just, you're just flat on nine, which I've just done. Okay, fair enough. So it's nine. Okay. Yeah. And I'm back, I'm back, I'm back like normal. Yep, and you can stand back up, dust off the mud. Um, trust. Hey, guys. <laughs> I just, I was, excuse me, I was too busy being dead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you, um, yeah, so, uh, trust, you're investigating these rocks. Um, yeah. Sh 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 yeah, so they look like uh, cracked geodes. So um, they reveal that they're very light, hollow geode with enough space, um, you know, almost five foot across. And there's two halves um, and there's crystals lining the inside of it. Ooh. Yeah, pretty specky. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, I'll, I'll call, call out to the wizard, uh, our wizard friend, who is here, mm -hmm. and go, could you cast the light spell on my shield, please? Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and... Uh... Can Leica pocket the two geodes, or...? Nope. Oh, they're five foot across. It's not the sort of thing you can just pocket. You, oh. could, you could sit inside it like <laughs> Superman. <laughs> okay. Um. Do I recognize uh, something about these geodes? Uh, you can roll either Arcana or Nature. I will roll Arcana. Okay. Um. A question, we, we pick up the arrows that we, that we use. Ah, uh, yeah, so for both of you, um, you can regain, you can find half of the arrows that you shot that are intact enough for you to put back in your quiver and reuse. Okay. All right. And round up if you shot three arrows or something. It's uh, So if you just keep track of how many arrows you shot, just add back in, you can put half of them back in your quiver. Okay, I, I, I never took them out, so yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, friend, boy. Uh, there are some that were over here, but we'll... yeah. Okay, uh, Zashir, um, you think that these were some sort of form of elemental? Okay. Summoned, animated, or just growing here? You don't know, but um, uh, yeah, they, they look like some sort of minor earth elemental. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I say you. Uh, I say this to the group, that these are probably minor elementals. Hmm. Uh, Maybe I'll we let... should all start to be a bit yeah this time. Yeah. What's that, yeah. sorry? Maybe we should all start to be a bit stealthier this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> will we <laughs> maybe take a break? Take a rest? Or is that too dangerous? You're thinking a short rest and like an hour? Yeah, because I kind of got beat up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or like we, uh, Ryder and I who took damage, we, we rest and you guys uh, watch your back. Well, the back to the it's only a couple of minutes back to the the main chamber. If you wanted to head back to the main chamber, there's a place to rest. If you don't want to just rest in this passage, 
Hello, Barbersting here. If Corral needs the recovery time. Yep. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to say to Corral as well. Don't be a hero. <laughs> it gets you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to be a hero. No. He was I just, just happened to be in the way of rocks. <laughs> Let, let me go first next time, mate. <laughs> okay, very nice. I say, uh, guys, uh, if you really want to take a short rest, then uh, I will uh, cast uh, my detect magic as a ritual to see if there's anything magical here. Okay. So you cast detect magic. Uh, um, the the area does emanate um, a very low level of magic. I, I, I say not, well, not low level, but it's something like you're in, you're, there's not like a magic, there's some sort of magic, magical effect going on. And it's, you know, the walls of the tunnel. Uh, I think Laika's going to just like break off in the group. She's like, I'm just going to scout a little bit ahead while everyone rests because I'm okay. Okay. So I think she's going to go off and do that. Okay. And I say, uh, if you see something like those mud balls, simply shout okay. and scream. <laughs> Start screaming and running down the cavern. Okay. I asked this year to, to turn off the light yeah. while we're resting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, we can see anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait, guys. It's also sleeping, I guess. Um. Okay, Laika, can you roll a nature check? Oh no. <laughs> okay. That's oh. a minus. That's a so the, ra the ranger pulls out a big one on the on the nature check, I think. Oh no, a five. No, I, it's a four. It's a, I have negative one. To oh, I see. Nature. You're not proficient in nature. You're How not one of you... those natural rangers. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> I have an eight in intelligence as a ranger. <laughs> hey everybody! Cool. I always build intelligent rangers. <laughs> okay. Nah. Um, so you find that um, so just going ahead a little bit, um, uh, you find that this tunnel twists and turns over and back and on itself. It would go down and under and over, and you'll probably feel like you're snaking around um, in pretty much the same general location. I've sort of simulated it here, but because it's a 2D map, I didn't want to have them all crisscrossing over each other. But it's more like, you know, you're, you're travelling down a, a, a bowl of spaghetti. Mm. Which I'm not prepared to map. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But... <laughs> 3D map. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the rest of you, um, you managed to get yourself a, um, a short rest. Which means you want it, you can spend health. Uh, what is it? A hit die. Yeah, hit die. Oh, yeah. You, can, you, you can spend hit die. hit die. Yep. Yeah, yeah I spend the one. Uh, you said that I get eight out. The same benefit as uh, the sort of trans. Yeah. says I get the same benefit as a human gets for eight hours. Yeah, it's not going to matter for a short rest. Um, that's more for having a half length long rest. Uh, but a short rest means you can roll a d10, add your con, and add that to your hit points. Okay, uh, and another question. I, since I have, um, what is it called, uh, second win, can I use that? You can. Rest and get it back? Uh, yes, you, yeah, you can. Okay, so first I'll roll second win then. Okay. And stay, which is hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fire level, so that is 1d10. Uh, plus three. Give me a second. The, the oh, this is so dumb. Uh, one d ten plus three, so that would be six nine. nine plus nine, and now I rest and I roll my hit dice. That's no way. Do 10 plus 2 is. Yeah, 4. four. Okay. How many hit die are you rolling? Well, you can. You, well, can, that, 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 you can keep rolling until three. you want to stop. 
I, I, three times. So you've already got nine, and you've now just rolled your hit dice plus two, so that's 13 back. 13 plus your original nine puts you at 21 health. Okay. You can spend the second one if you want to. Okay, uh, plus four, and another hit dice, okay? Okay. I'm doing this in the least efficient way, but well. All right, you're back to full. Okay. Mm, and you've still. I got... need to do my hit day, if I yes, may. Yes. yes. Are you injured, Zashir? Uh, yes, I was injured from the fall. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the way, so your first level character. So you roll a d6. Uh, is your hit dice, yes. and you just after a short rest, you can roll that hit dice. So you roll a d6 and add your constitution bonus, and that's how many health you're going back, up to your maximum. Yeah, I did that to several messages ago. Oh, okay. To full of you. Oh, yeah, so you got the seven. Yeah. So you're back up to full. He got six plus one, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> full hit points. Nice. Yeah, I have seven max hit points. Okay. And did you, you, do you want to adjust that on your... I can see you've got two here. What's your... uh, let me check because I believe I I just updated it. I'm just doing it on your on your icon. So what is your maximum hit points? Ah, sure. Okay. What? What's your maximum? Seven. My maximum is seven. Okay, and that's showing that you're now top of the pops. Right. Um. So, and uh, uh, if I may, I would like to uh, use my uh, arcane recovery uh, feature to restore that one uh, spell slot. Right, yeah, so you get your magic missile um, spell slot back. Uh, Trust, yes. you're investigating these stones. Well, you can't put them in your pocket. Um, you probably could break stuff off if you wanted to take some, start filling up some sort of sack or pouch or something. Yeah, I'll take take some. Okay. Um, so I'll just assume you've got a whole bunch of these um, purplish glowing geodes. Um, moving on. I'm gonna. F you don't encounter anything else, although it's a slow and windy road. Hmm. Uh, can she be sneaking too? Because she just wants to be uh, safe. Uh, yeah. I assume you. Yeah. So you. You're, oh my god. You're stealthing all over the place. And uh, it ends uh, here. I think and what I'm going to do? I think she's going to wait for the rest of the group. Oh, I'm assuming everyone's all going along behind you now, um, and you're heading oh, off okay, after, the, after the short rest. Yeah. Be. There, uh, we're doing the old position, the old one going. Okay. Yeah, the, the, uh, all you hear is clink, clink, clink. We probably, <laughs> probably hear yeah, splodge, splodge. Okay, so this is where up, up the top here is where you end up. Oh, so where? I can, I can just move you all up to here. Okay. Ah. Yeah, that's it. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, so this part down here, if I shift, so where I'm pinging, assume that that just joins on to this chamber here. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. So um, over here. Yeah, and you can smell this acrid uh, stench. There's a stinging scent of acid burning your nostrils as you look into this this rocky oblong cavern. It's a, And there's a vast pool filling it. Um, between yourselves and the other side. I'll just reveal a little bit more to you. Ha! Ew. 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 Ha. Anyone have acid, uh, acid immunity? Uh, I have resistance uh, to poison. <laughs> and, and, and against poison. <laughs> um, I say I forgot my ear. Acid immunity as kindergarten. 
Well, I guess we go back home then. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Well, oh, looks like the adventure ends here. <laughs> Nonsense. Tell you a little cool lesson? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, if we have uh, another 10 minutes, I uh, use uh, my uh, detect magic ritual uh, to check uh, if uh, it is an illusion or not. Okay. Um, you cast detect magic and it radiates the same sort of magic conjuration summoning that the the um the sp spaghetti tunnels radiated mm. can like a, like pick up like a little piece of dirt or something and knead it into the acid to see if it'll burn the to see if the acid's real okay it looks real but it's not like um it's not like aliens where it's going to burn through 10 stories um of flooring or anything um but it would do damage, you know, it's like strong chlorine of some sort. Hmm. Question, is it flammable? Um, oh my explode. How can you, how are you going to find that out? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, maybe just cast flame at it. Well, I, I, can, I can cast a firebolt from 100 to wheel back up. Oh no. <laughs> Ten minutes of bomb in this case. <laughs> boom! No. Okay. You sling a firebolt in it, it doesn't ignite. Oh. Okay, that answers that question. I, I check uh, if uh, there are any ways to cross that without going knee deep into the acid. Okay. There's, there's no um, ledges on the two sides. Um, this, if anything, the walls slope in, so they're overhung. It's not the sort of thing that you could just climb around easily. No. Uh, is, it, like, is, it, is it shallower, like at the edges? Um, it, you can see through it. It probably looks about knee deep. It looks like uh, you could, you know, if, if you had the right gear, perhaps you could walk across. It's, it's, you wouldn't be, need to swim across, if that's what you mean. Um, can I use the wall to like parkour across? Parkour across? Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Like it's like jump the put them into the wall, kind of rock climb sideways. Yeah. <laughs> Overhung. It's fifty foot across to the other to the other ledge at the other side. Uh, I don't think so. Um, uh, is it the climbers kit to like in in the wall make it like a, a rope? hold across the acid? Yeah, so um, uh, it is possible to climb across using the climber's kit, but it still would take some skills. It's not, it wouldn't be far from automatic. But the climber's yeah. kit, sort of, the climber's kit, what that's got in it is, you know, pitons that you hammer into the wall um, with loops on them. You'd then be tying rope off on it and you could tie it around yourself and just swing there, hanging, um, yep. like, like a little harness type thing, and then do it again. Um, you know, that, that's where a climber's kit may be able to fashion you a way across. Yeah. Well, we maybe tar is there any way we could, like, tie a rope to, like, Tarzan or way to, or to your side? Like, swing, swing across? Uh, let's see. Do you want to do a, a straight intelligence check? Intelligence check? Yeah. Okay. This is uh, more about uh, geometry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you calculate that if you had something um, attached to the wall, uh, to, attached to the ceiling, like here in the middle, whoops, uh, here, and you swung across, you would hit the acid before you swung across the other side. The pendulum would take you into the water. Wow. Uh, well, well we, that was another good idea then. Could we yeah. maybe make like a zip line or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you were to, you know, have your climbers kit and string it across, I guess you might be able to go hand over hand. 
uh, hanging upside down. I, I was thinking, I was thinking for a way out when we we do get out, we we've got an easy way out sort of thing. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So. So. Plugs so kit along the wall. Sound like a good idea. Yeah, so I mean, it doesn't sound like a good idea, but it's the only one we have. The, the, yeah. main, the main risk is to the first person. The first person would need to do some sort of free climbing um, to get all the pitons and things in place. What check would that be? Athletics or acrobatics? I would let you do either. Uh, hang on. Uh, athletics. I'm just reading in, into it now. So, um... I, I could roll uh, athletics for that, uh, to do that. Yep. Who's that, Gridor? Yeah. Uh, unless someone wants to jump across, uh, like, grip the... the uh... um... One moment, so may I ask a question based yep. on the map? that I see. Yep. Uh, there is a little patch of ground in the lower left corner. Yes. Uh, can we uh, use uh, the, lo the southern path to go south and then, uh, because it seems that there are, uh, it's like less distance. Yeah, if you could get to that point, there's probably enough place for maybe one, maybe two people to stand on with their back to the wall. Um, apart from Grindor with his backpack, but um, uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, so there's a sort of a place of safety if you really had to, to claw yourself out or to, to stand there. Then we go, then I say we go more than that. Can't like, can't you like there? Uh, I can probably, I can try to, um, can I roll perception just to see if there's any kind of smart way? Uh, let's see, yeah, um, smart way. Safe <laughs> <laughs> way? Better than us making like a... The, the, the least dangerous of, of the yeah. ways. <laughs> that will not total party kill us just from walking into a... Yeah, okay. So with you, you've got the block and tackle, and, you, and you, you mentioned about the climber's kit, and you've got that block and tackle. Um, mm -hmm. da, 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 setting pitons into the wall, at least three pitons as a standard action. Could pull mm -hmm. themselves at half their movement rate. So there's some, you reckon there's some way you could do it, um, uh, at, but, but not without risk, at least for the first person. Um, you also think that, you know, testing this out, you know, with a piece of rope or a stick or, or something that you've got. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so we tried to set it on yeah. fire. Did we actually <laughs> test if it's acid? Yeah, so you've tested that it's acid. Like what it does. And tested that it's fairly yeah. weak. You know, it's not sort of you don't stick an, a, a, an arrow into it and it's gone or anything like that. Um, uh, but uh, but it would do damage. You can see that it's clearly damaged the arrow that you stick in there. Um, okay, yeah, so you, you, you reckon you could probably, with a running jump, get to this point over here and just jump across. That will get you a fair way. Uh. Yeah, screw it. Like I'll, like I'll do the jump. Okay. Yep. So you can get across to there, and you're now standing with your back to the to the wall, facing the others, and now you've got um, hmm. however, <laughs> uh, 20, yeah. 30, 40, maybe forty five feet or so to get to the other side. Hmm. Could I take like two arrows? Like I have an arrow and a dagger, and like kind of like stab them into the wall, and kind of like kind of I don't know like. Side shift my way, like a yeah. We well got a climb, you've got a climber's kit. You've got a climber's kit, and you've got a ice that that um, a pick as well. 
So with a pick in your hand, you could probably stab them in and, and climb your way along. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Can I like try to set up like kind of a rope thing that people are gonna handle that people can hold onto in the wall? Okay. So while you're attaching these pitons, you'll be hanging with the the, the pick in the wall with your left hand. Um, how will you? If you attach the the pitons, have got loops in them, so you could thread a rope through it. Um, uh, how you? driving in the pigeons because the uh, but because they've got the um, you've got your pit in one hand and you've got the pit in the other how you drive huh. in. Uh, can I try to like uh, like move arch my back kind of like kick it in with my foot real uh, <laughs> real yeah, dramatically sure. yep so you can get one in there pretty easily right where you are but um, and you can test it out and see if you can kick one in with your foot. Can you do a uh, acrobatics? Okay. This is less of a. That's like not one. This is wow. Okay. All right. So it doesn't work. You you kick one of the pitons and it falls into the acid pool. You lose one. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have a rope um, as I've drawn there that goes from where trust is across to your ledge. Uh huh. Well, we have that. Um, uh, fuck. Uh, screw it. I'm just gonna try that again. I'm gonna try to put in another piston thing and like a. Okay. So I can... Try again. Yeah. Is that another acrobatics? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a ten this time. Okay. Let's see. Better than a net one. Yeah, better than a net one. <laughs> <laughs> You're now clinging to the wall and you've got a rope tied around yourself. The rope is tied onto the piton so that you can hang there. And you've, you've, mm -hmm. uh, while you're hanging onto the, the pickaxe in the wall, you've kicked in this piton and threaded it through. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to try that again so I can do it again with the other one. Okay. That's a 12. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's do it one last time, hopefully. Yeah. It's a nat 20. Oh, wow. so Why you... did I get a nat 20 on the last one? Does this hurt? That hurts. <laughs> that is a charm, I guess. <laughs> okay, so now. All right. So I this... see you that hey, I will go first. Okay. And if I will fall into acid, uh, quickly follow through. Just in case you will fall, you will fall on me and not into the acid. Okay. I'll let you go use athletics or acrobatics for this. You can either do it with um, deftness or just, you know, haul your way across. It's up to you. I will try acrobatics because in athletics I have minus one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you should have rolled with the other one. <laughs> so this is this is Corral, I believe. Is that right? Or is it Zashir? This is Zashir. Zashir. Okay, can you roll like you did with the fall? Um, 1d6. Okay. Four. So you're about here when you when you fall in. Um, let's see. All right, I uh, tried to go on my feet uh, through the acid okay. without touching the rope. Okay, you um, leap to your feet, you take five points of damage, leap to your feet and, hold, and belt out in one round and wade yourself to safety, just that, those final 15 feet and get out. Uh, with two health left. Okay. Anyone else giving it a go? Ready.
Who's yep, next? I'm done. Okay, who's next? All right, I'll go next. Okay. Acrobatics I'll... or athletics? Acrobatics, yeah. Okay, where are you going? Same, I have minus 12. Okay, the 12 gets you across. Yay! <laughs> next. Okay. I'll go next. Uh, Corral. Let's see. Let's, let's see if I take some more punishment or if I. Mmm. It was acrobatic. Okay, never mind. <laughs> oh. Alright. And. Grido. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Oh, I, got, I got strengthened across. Okay. Oh. Okay. Two. Uh oh. Can you roll D6? Who would have thought that parkouring with a hammer would be right? Yes. Yes! <laughs> ah. Okay. okay. The one time you want to roll a one. You splashing, yep. you splashing here. <laughs> Take six points of damage. Ah, oh, <laughs> oh, six damage. Yeah. Are you going to flail your way to the edge? Uh, yeah. Okay. You managed to get That's the most ineffective acid ever. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Uh, six damage. Uh, you, you catch your breath and go, whoa, that, that, surely that was just a practice run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I meant to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I say first, so can anyone uh, heal us up? Uh, I will give you my, one of my water skins. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay. Alright, you haul your way across. How did I make it that time? <laughs> How many adventures does it take to cross that? Well, I, I've still probably got more health than most people in the party. <laughs> Well, okay. Okay. <laughs> you just to get acid bath is what. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of acid, yeah. you know, just. Yeah. It's but a scratch. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zashir, you're probably the worst off here on two health. Um... Yeah. Ouch. Well, well, I will sacrifice my point. potion of healing for that one. But I'll give you my potion of healing at. You need that more than I do. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I will take it, all right. <laughs> all right. You get four yeah. back. So uh, six. So you're only one down. <clears throat> all right. Uh, like a year up the front there. Um, this looks like a tunnel goes up from here. And um, uh, f feeling, feeling, feeling around the, where, the, where this short, stubby tunnel pokes in, like a little cave mouth, as you um, feel around, um, an opening sort of op spirals open from the, from the centre outwards, um, revealing this tunnel going up. Hmm. Uh, it looks like it would be fairly easy to climb. It's about five foot across, and uh, it's it's like ribbed, like there's rings around the inside of it. Okay, I think I just relay that information to the group, and I start. Can I do perception, kind of, to make sure that like? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or perception's more about um, just keeping an eye out for something. Otherwise, yeah, I don't want it to like climb through the hole and there'd be like a like an armada around us in the opening. Yeah, okay. Yeah, can you um Yeah, roll perception. Okay. So twenty but not that. Okay. Dirty twenty. Mm -hmm. This reminds you of um, you know, when you're um uh, do, do, do. 
it reminds you of a dis digestive tract. Hmm. Did we just All go right. Oh my god. Like, oh my god, are we in like the stomach of an animal? Oh god. What are we oh like swallowed? Oh my god, this mine is alive and we're being- are we in a giant golem? Are we gonna go out- but yet we have the creature's ass? Are those golems like antibodies or like yeah. oh <laughs> oh yeah? Because it's like we got swallowed when all of the like oh yeah, yeah and it like went like... down. It's like don't go into the ground like it's alive. Oh, oh. And its tummy hurts. Its, it's stomach hurts. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, well, let's climb through its intestines, I guess. Um. What I mean, you... there is an exit, surely. Yeah. And we we just gave it a slight problem with its stomach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, it's got holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> the re the reason why this perception, why this triggered from, you know, when you're sort of gutting animals and so on from hunting um, mm -hmm. is what it would have been is intestines, I guess, was all that spaghetti you were going through. The, the, yeah, like you oh, say, okay. the stomach. So this would be more a esophagus or something. So we went through its, uh, its anus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, my god, we oh my god, we went the wrong way. Okay. Um. Well, at least when we will get out, we will be able to talk to the, it. Then the mud balls were its poop. Oh, maybe. Could but they be. were like sentient poop. So that's a little bit. Uh, <laughs> that, 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 that's a bit discouraging. <laughs> Hmm. That woman did not tell us that we were going to be going to Yeah, I did not realize that this cavern. Are we in the right cavern? What the heck is happening? Where's the gold? Where's the gold? I say, all right, guys, let's go ahead. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's climb through this uh, thing. So yeah, I think we're let's gonna keep go going to go through this mountain. Yeah. So the, the tunnel past the Lake of Acid is smooth and round, similar to the tunnel before the last room, only it clearly continues straight without turning. Um, but it's it's. The, while you go through the ceiling, it's, it, it straightens out, so you don't need to climb. But all the surfaces are covered in a sort of shiny slime with soft, spongy earth, ripple, earth ripples. Um, and uh, the, a, a, like, a, like a wave, those, earth, those ripples uh, move towards you and then, then you know, level out as they get to where you are. Mm. Uh, pretty quickly, a, a few moments, a few moments later, later, another wave of mud, um, quickly followed by another one, uh, comes down and then smooths out as it gets to the end of the tunnel where you are. I guess that's a spit. I guess it's swallowing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like it's like I did not sign up for this. It's cool, but I did not sign up for this. We have worm sign. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, can I kick a bit of that mud into the acid? Uh, yes. Yeah. The the when you put the mud in the acid, you find that the rest of the mud from the walls is more alkaline, and so it sort of counteracts the acid a bit. You probably think that if you were covered in this mud, um, it would give you some protection against the acid. All right. <laughs> that would be nice to know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a couple of minutes ago. Can I like it cover uh, herself a little bit in this uh, this dirt mucus? Yeah. So so that's you want. So you want to? That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> she needs the protection, you know. Okay. So you. <laughs> What are you gonna do? Rub, roll around. Roll around the mud real quick. Oh, okay. The uh, rangers rolling around in the in the esophagus. Um, <laughs> I follow rangers' example. I, okay. I, I, I just go over. Okay, pick them up. Like, no. Okay. No. No. Um. 
Uh, of the healing mud crab. Oh, bad dude. It wasn't so bad. Laker, um, as you're standing there, a wave of mud comes and it looks like it's about to sort of buck you. Um, can you roll a uh, dexterity ac acrobatics check? Oh, uh, not a saving throw, just a regular No, just check. a check. 16. Okay, what happens is as it comes, you just hop over it and it continues away from you and you're still standing there. You keep your feet. Huh. I think I'm like I, I think I related. Really, I think it might be hard for us to travel up here, but I think it's the only way because there's mud just constantly coming down from whatever swallowing. <laughs> but <laughs> I think I think we can do it. Yeah, it's it, a little tricky, it, but uh, it feel, like he rolled sixteen. Do we have any but, more of those uh, climbing spikes? The climbing spikes no. are still there. You still got a way to go out this way if you need to. I say uh, we uh, put those spikes uh, in the ground, uh, and uh, if we see another wave of mud, uh, we cling to those spikes. So it won't push us back that much. Hmm. I'm down. Yeah, uh, sounds good. Okay. So you've still got a handful of spikes left. I think there's about 10 in that bundle, and I think there's only four or so, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so you've still got another five. Um, Plus the ten in the Dungeoneers kit. Yeah, true. So we've yeah. got 15 total. Okay, let's do like a little rope situation. Yeah, and there's at least two ropes that you got given beyond whatever you started the game with. Okay. Okay, let's do a little... Uh... I think like it's going to climb ahead and kind of put them into like the esophagus wall and like okay. put rope mm. through them. All right, so can you just do a um, da, 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 total number of characters seed in the saving throw? Right, so do your, um, you've do, uh, so you're going to make a dash now, and as the waves come, you sort of leap over them, and you're carrying a couple of pitons, a hammer, and the rope in your hand. Can you roll mm -hmm. a DC 13 uh, dex acrobatics check? Uh, so just dex for just roll Yeah, yeah, dex acrobatics. Okay. Uh, 22. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you hop up, belt up ahead, and then um, bang in the pit on. Um, okay. Right, and you get to the end of that, where the peristalsis stops, um, or where it starts from at the end of the passage. And uh, the rope sort of keeps getting muscled away down the passage, but the part that's tied to the pit on stops it from all getting, getting swept down to the others. But you others at the other end, a rope ends up, you know, coming down to you and um, goes tight. So if you want to try, you've got a rope to hang on to so you don't end up getting washed back out into the acid pit. Yep. Does anyone else want to have, have a go? Yeah, I will. Uh, uh, that's uh, trust. Do you want to do a um, a dex acrobatics check? And this is with advantage now that you've got the um, got the rope. Okay, you get up to the end. I'm just going to move you off to one side um, if you've made it. I'm going to I'm doing my way up, holding on to that rope. Who's that, Guido? Yep. Okay, where you go? Uh, so athletics. N yeah, then? no, it's acrobatics, but but with advantage. It's still acrobatics. It is, yeah. But with advantage. Yeah. Okay. You've got a time jumping over the waves of of Earth. Well, thank God I had the advantage. All right, you get up there too. Fifteen. So that I go next and uh, say to Carol. Catch me if I fall back again. Okay. Um, okay All right. I guess I'll try. Don't count on, don't count okay. on it though. Okay. Oh, okay. So you well, you fall. Uh... Okay. What happened? Okay. So you get. Um... Yeah, so you fall. You, no, you get to make another check, though. 
because you're, you're hanging on to this rope. All right. It takes you two goes at it. No, and again. So you guys are seeing him sort of, he's hanging on to the rope, he's not moving. He's just... But he's, um... <laughs> uh, he keeps getting... Help him out somehow. It's like watching someone fail at one of those bucking bronco bull things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I try again. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I, I'm just watching him like. Oh, yeah, we're on the same Okay. I say to Piral, all, all right, you can uh, go four. forward because it will take some time. Yeah, number four. Okay. Uh, yeah! Yeah! Okay. Yay! Um, now you get natural 20. <laughs> that was Zashir, I believe. Karal, you're last. Okay, let's go. Acrobatics. Okay, you get up as well. All right, I'm going to move you guys along to another area. Okay. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Well, can you see where you are? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you've just come up this passage. Um, I'm just gonna. You come into a wide, a sort of half circle shaped room, uh, with an overhang um, above you. Uh, which wow. obscures some of the ceiling, um, but you can see there's a ceiling even higher than this. So I have to do a bit of a odd reveal. Hmm. There. Jesus. I love its teeth. Yeah. Uh. Oh. Did anyone bring it? The okay, and so what you so you see this circular cir, half circle room with all these um, crystals glowing in a ring at the edges of it. There's a ledge which is the half circle that you can't see because you can't see over the ledge at this stage. But there looks like this, uh, let's see. Yeah, before you was a room with, with rows of stalagmites and stalactites of, of uh, gems uh, on three sides opposite the entrance you're coming through. And there's this giant unmoving worm with purple skin hanging from the ceiling. Its end seems to flip over onto a ledge that's above you. There's a chill blue light shining from a um, an axe that's embedded in its head. And there's a skeletal, uh, yeah, a few bones down on the ground down here. Whoops, hang on. Down there. What do you want to do? Can we see if uh, this worm is uh, what pushed all, this, all that mud uh, into that <laughs> road? It's not moving. It's uh, if it's not dead, it's um, it's not doing anything. It's asleep. I think Lex is going to try to sneak past it. Okay. Can you do a stealth? Yeah. Well, uh, please. That's an eighteen. <laughs> okay. So you managed to get where you can see it. Uh, let's see. I'll reveal a bit more so you can see now. I'm... Hmm, where's reveal? Oh, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> There's a giant, yes, yeah, so it's a huge uh, purple worm coming out through the ceiling, um, sort of stuck there or, you know, wedged in there. 
the, the hole that it's in is the same size as it, probably six or seven feet across. And there's also a body on the ground near it um, and an axe buried into this worm as well. Hmm. Can I do a perception to try to see if there's any kind of exit this way, or is it? Uh, you can't see any other exit from the room, no. Hmm. I think I signal to the to the group to try to be stealthy. <laughs> and not wake up the tongue. Oh, from from where you are, now, now that you're quite close, from where you are, you can tell that the tongue's quite decomposed, and the oh. ax, and the axe is buried right into its the back of its spine. There's a large battle axe. Is can we tell if it's actually dead or? Oh, that, <laughs> so that's uh, so. Uh, Laker's view is that it's dead. Okay, so I signal them that it's actually dead, that they can come in. Okay. Shoo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so, right. Can I inspect the? Can I? Can I inspect the body? You need to climb up. You need to climb. Find a way to climb up onto the ledge. Okay. Can I do it? You could climb up the worm, I suppose. Unless there's some other way that you can get up. Okay. Inspect the. Uh, can I examine that uh, dead body? Just one sec. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. So you, um, you need to do a climbing check to get up there. You can you can just roll a um, athletics to to climb up. Can I um, inspect the crystals? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're large. Yeah. Um, not as flash as the ones in the geos, um, but much larger. No climbing checks yet, anyone? Uh, what's the climbing check? I, I roll. Oh, uh, Federico. Uh, okay. So, so Corral. Uh, Corral and Lyca. So both of the both of the uh, the elves. Um, Zip up. Oh, um, wait, before I zip up, can I, can I try to chip off some of the teeth? Um, the yeah, I'll, of the teeth? I'll, I'll assume you're chipping it off while he climbs up first, and then you'll, you can climb up yeah. just after that. Let's see. Okay, can I investigate the, the body? Just one sec. Okay. Okay, as you um, climb, uh, uh, Corral, um, you notice the stalactites start to move. Um, if you can see my see my thing, sort of, sort of, and they come together, not like crunch and chomp you all, but they sort of come and they sort of grind, grind together a little. Um, Lake is right over there, and you're you're examining this, and you witness it firsthand. Um, uh, Corral, can you do a DC 12 dexterity saving throw? This is just wild. Yeah, uh, dexterity, yes. Okay, no problem. Okay. Um, you definitely um, managed to keep your keep your footing and uh, vault back up onto this um, onto this ledge. Um, sorry, I missed I missed it. I think uh, Zashir, you were wanting to do something. Uh, yeah, I actually wanted to examine that uh, dead body. Oh, the dead body's up on the ledge, so... Ah, then I climb to the ledge, yeah. Okay. So I've got three up there. Uh, Grydor and Trust, you're down there just for uh, now. I, I wanted to have a look at that axe. Um, was that up on the ledge as well? It is, but you can examine it from where you are, just because it's right buried into the spine of the purple worm, and... Um, uh, you can roll a uh, investigation check on it with advantage. Uh, 
Okay. To you, it's clearly of dwarven manufacture and uh, fairly magnificent. It's got runes, oh, oh. runes and things on it. I would like to take it. Okay. All right. Can, so, can, I, can I just throw it to him? Uh, yeah, I'll just go up to go to you guys now. Trust you're on the lookout there, sort of hanging back a little bit, just next to the yep. teeth, but not standing amongst them. Um, no, yeah. Let's see. This, uh, here we go. You feel a chill at the back of all of your necks, like a Karal and Zashir. And um, as this apparition appears before you, above the body Why? that's lying there. Uh, it's dwarven, you know, takes on the form of a dwarf, uh, but is ghostly. me for a second is it just those three that did it no you all see it uh, manifest uh -huh. i go i i go oh my god i go hey ready me go okay um name c save Right, so it sort of comes up out of that body that's right there. Well, <clears throat> um, it doesn't have, it's, it's, it's wearing armour, ghostly armour. Um, and uh, just, and, and looks at you, hanging in the air. Does it seem... Uh, aggressive or like it's going to attack us? Or yeah, it, it looks like and... it looks like its chest is heaving as if it's angry. Oh God! Mm. I think I, we're uh, gonna have to fight then. I talk to it first. I say, uh, uh, "What troubles you, ghost?" <laughs> um. Uh, he says, "I hunger for battle." <laughs> Um, I come up and I say, but Ghost, you have already won. You, What for all of this, this foe, this great worm, you have already defeated it. it. It pauses for a moment and then looks up and then off to one side as if it's sort of looking at something it can see and says, do you hear its thoughts? It festers in the pain of earth. Go no further. Death is the only release for you. Intense. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Ghostman, do you do you perhaps know where the gold is? Gold. Gold is not what not the treasure that lies within. It is the seed of fell earth. Huh. I mean, we were told to come get some gold here. Or do we? Oh, or do we accidentally end up in the wrong place? He, he looks just pissed off at you talk, keeping on talking about gold, and, he, and then he, he calls out, Face the wrath of Malice Black Iron, Northor of Deep Dura. Deep Dura, you know, is a, is a god of the Duergar. So it's probably a, du a Duergar, and he, he launches into to grab at you. And then, uh, I'll just uh, yell out in, in Dwarvish at him, uh, uh, yell out in Dwarvish at him, so, saying, uh, just stop. Stop, mate. We're, we're, we're here um, to help you. All right. Well, you'll have to do that on your initiative round now because he's, he's reaching yeah. both, of his, both of his hands out at um, uh, Zashir. Well, one of you. That's I know. It's a bit rough, really. Uh, would I... If the speaker has an act to get, so I would have initiative on... Uh, advantage on initiative. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh... No, well, thank God for advantage. Just at one point oh higher. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, can you put the 11 on me because I forgot to select my token? Oh. Last roll. Last roll. No. Who needs an 11? 
I'm missing someone. Who needs an 11? Zashir. Ah, oh, Zashir. Yes, uh, I rolled initiative, uh, but I forgot to select my token. Okay. It's 11. Okay. What you can always do is right click and go add turn and then just type it in if you need to. But we're just going to uh, put in an order. Okay, so here we go. Grido, you're up first. Well, I'll I, I say, say my, my piece and uh, if that doesn't sink in, I'm going to prepare guiding bolt, uh, a ready uh, guiding bolt. Uh, okay. In case things really go south, <laughs> it looks it looks like he's about to about to strangle um, one of the guys up the top there, one of the folks. Oh, uh, then, then I'll just go guide and bolt. Okay, and screw it. All right. Uh, it's roll to hit, I believe, for guiding bolt. I accidentally did that at advantage. Uh, oh, that's okay. Um, I, I generally first, set, just take the first number if you accidentally do it. Um, 18. Yep, so that hits. Uh, so, 9 radiant damage. Since it's un, or, or undead, would that damage be doubled? Um, it takes the full damage, but it doesn't, um, do, doesn't take extra. So it's not particularly um, harmed by it. So that's, that, that's you. Uh, trust, you're also getting a good view there from uh, your vantage point. What do you want to do? Uh, uh, I just... Fire, fire. Oh, wait. Yeah, fireball. Okay. <laughs> I just attack. Yeah, go Why for not? it. Uh, you 12. hit. You hit. Okay. What? <laughs> 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 Any damage? Oh. damage? Is that possible? Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> it's one d ten. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, it all helps. One, one. Okay. You do damage, and if you want to move, you can. No, I'm okay here. Okay. Now I think at your level, I don't know if you. Um, you had a chance to look, but um, second level sorcerers can get they get spell points that they can convert into levels. Next level, you can you can also get meta magic, which means you can cast two spells around if you, one of them is a cantrip um, or quicken and some other other stuff worth having a look at. But it means if you use your first level spell slot, you've actually got two slots that you can then on, using a bonus action to recover those spell slots. Anyway, it won't, won't matter for now, but it means you've, you've, you've got more than just the first level spell slots that you know right now. Oh, you're second, okay. aren't you? Yeah, I'm second level. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to move you on. Uh, Zashir, you are right next to this uh, ghost spectre thing. Uh, can I get down from that ledge fast enough? Uh, if I will use this edge. Yeah, you could. It, it would get a free strike on you when you leave its melee range. Uh, uh, okay. Can I use disengage and go down from that? Yeah, ledge? you can use disengage, um, and then it's like ten foot to get to there, and then it'll take a climbing check though. So do your athletics or um, acrobatics. Okay. Two. Yeah. Falls flat on your face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you just land um, poorly and take one damage. All right. Oh. Okay. Um, so that's that's your turn, uh, Laker. Uh, okay. I'm going to back up a little bit so I'm not so close. Okay. And I'm going to fire my long blow at him. Okay. Is it 20? Okay, it hits. Um, you find that the arrow continues all the way through. It does do some damage, but you need to do, <sighs> do half. 
Okay, so that's only three points of damage. Okay. Huh. And uh, <laughs> this thing's not going to get a chance to attack at Kar this rate. No, I did roll a one for initiative though. Um, Corral. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move and attack with my longbow. Oh, you've gone off the edge there. <laughs> There's not far you can. You're gonna drop. Five foot? Yeah, that's not um, When you Which square? That one there? Whoops. Um, somewhere I can just shoot him with a Yeah, you can shoot him from there. Okay. Oh, would this guy be considered a fiend or is he a... He's not a fiend, right? Un he's undead. A ghost. Okay. Go, Corral. Well, yeah, that, that was not the way he's supposed to be going there. Alright. Does I hear that much damage? Yes, it is. Roll your damage. Well, you've got damage. Oh, I see. So you've got uh, eight. So that'd be half. Four damage. Uh, then it goes. All right. There's two on the ledge. I'm just going to roll. Uh, even. It's you, Corral. Odd. Rah! Goes over to Laika. Um. No, Laika. Yes. So squishy. Okay, it comes over and tries to um, grab you. Oh, I'll just move my turn order around. Oh, I hit some cost 21. Uh, mm. One, come on, one. Does seven damage. <laughs> Oof. All right. Uh, you, need, right? you need to roll a DC oh. 10 constitution saving throw as well. A con saving throw? Oh no. 15? Hang on. Uh, okay, that's going to pass. All um, right. There's a chance that that permanently reduces your hit points. Huh. <laughs> oh my god. I only have 18 to begin with and now I'm down to 11. How much oh, did you great. have to start with 8? I had 18 to start with. 18, right. 11. Uh, okay. Cool. All right, so that's it. Um, it's right next to you now. And that's it going. So move on to Grindor again. Uh, You're struggling. Again, I'm going to. You can't really see it. it. You can't really see it from there now. You might need to swing around the other side. Oh, that, that, that's okay. I can, but, Over there somewhere. Uh, 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 how did it do it? Uh, that, that. Yeah, but I can do that. This is not difficult terrain in this room. Uh, I'm just going to go to there. Okay. And guiding bolt it. Okay, go for it. Uh, we're all... <laughs> Oh, what happened? I rolled a two <laughs> for a oh, six yeah. hit. Okay. <laughs> so you if that hit, that would be maximum damage. It would have been great. <laughs> Trust. Uh, uh, you're a bit further away, but you uh, actually no, you can see it, or you can you can just see it. It's got a bit of cover. If you want to move to get a better vantage point, like over here or something, you might get a full bead on it. So we're just going to kill it. That's what everyone appears to be trying to do. <laughs> okay. Kill it all. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll just... Oh, wait, no. I'll... Can I do Thunder Wave instead? Thunder Wave is more a 15-foot range thing, and it affects everyone in the, in the cone. Yeah, okay, Don't five volt. <laughs> Okay, 12 is a hit. Roll your damage. Okay. I've... Yeah, that's decent. All right, it goes, it discorporates and uh, vanishes in a, in a puff of ectoplasmic mist. You kill it. Yeah. No. Notch up one spectre on your belt, um, uh, Trust. <clears throat> Great. Okay, 
Um, yeah, so what do you want to do from here? The, 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 there's nothing else to fight, nothing else. Uh, we can move out of um, initiative. What happened to the yeah. axe? The axe is still there. Uh, I uh, call to Kiral and Laika and uh, say, can you check the body? Okay. okay. So you find, oh, a, no. you find a body of a dwarf, oh. um, uh, some rusty armor, some uh, rotten leather gear. Um, there's a shield decorated with a holy symbol of deep dura, chased in silver, which would be valuable. Um, doesn't radiate magic. The battle axe um, has um, uh, it is completely untarnished, and in the um, rotted backpack, leather leather backpack on this body is um, a potion. Okay. Um. Uh, can I investigate the potion? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, let's see. It, it feels quite heavy considering its size. Hmm. Can I do an arcana check on it? Uh, yeah. 18. Okay. You can't tell what it does. But you can tell it's probably an enchanted potion, rather than poison or, you know, something else. All right, I'll I'll pocket it, I guess. Okay. Well, uh, uh, every... like, you want the potion? You want the potion? Yeah, I'll just I'll pocket it. Uh, I mean, like a potion of healing. Do you want one? Or are you? Uh, oh one? yeah. Um. Mm. You guys mind if we just take a short rest and then I can probably get my. Alright. Yeah, sure. Let's have a rest in the in, in the cruiser's teeth. Yep. While Laika uh, is uh, making a short rest, I will cast uh, Detect Magic as a ritual and check if uh, these crystals uh, are the source of magic or the warm body is such a source. Okay, the 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 room radiates the same magic. The crystals aren't any more magical than the rest of it. The um, uh, potion and the axe radiate magic, um, as a magic item would. Uh, the purple worm radiates, uh, and the remains of the corpse radiate no magic at all. All right. Uh, and you, you, I ask, you get a short rest. So if you want to roll any hit dice, do that and do that now as well for everyone. Okay, I'm full health, so it's okay. Okay. I don't have hit dice. <coughs> I, think it, I think it's just like get... Laker and Grider, or if you wanted to spend any hit dice, you could. Uh, I already did. Okay. <laughs> I guess we should chip out a bit of these crystals for further research. Okay. There doesn't seem to be any other exits. No, you don't see any other exits out of here. Well, other than oh, the, the purple, uh, use the purple my, worms breaking uh, out of the wall. Uh, so, so who's taking the axe again? Isn't it the dwarf? You? <laughs> yes, I, I'm, I'm just. <coughs> I, I, I have affinity to weapons. <laughs> it, it, that's my character's. No, that's my thing. I'm just wondering if anyone else wants it. <laughs> uh, Before... No, I can't use the uh, axe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm an archer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I can shoot the axe I, out I, with my bow and arrow, but. Even for Corral um, and Laika, it's not a finesse axe. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fire and it's, from and it definitely won't go as a quarter staff. Yeah. Yeah. I can't oh, duct tape it to the quarter staff and, and just start swinging it around. Yeah. By the way, can you try and swing that X at the crystals? Who do you want to swing at the crystals? The X. Uh. Yeah, can the dwarf I, do it? I, yeah, I, I don't have, I cannot that. wield a... Actually, can I wield a... No, I don't think I can wield an axe. Yeah, you're proficient in it. I uh, am? Yeah, okay. yeah, you're proficient in all martial weapons as a ranger. Um, so is Corral. It's just that it, the, the ability associated with wielding it is strength, not dexterity. Yeah, because I, I, think, I think I just hand the, the axe to Grydor because I yeah. cannot wield that. Yeah. I can. Can I wield it? I'm a fighter, not a. Oh yeah. So you're I'm proficient. Ranger. You're proficient, but you would roll to hit and damage using your strength, not your dexterity. Oh, so okay, you get okay. minus one to hit rather than plus three or something. If it was a scimitar or yeah, a, okay. yeah. Yes, basically I'm going to use it then. Okay. Can I investigate worms? Yep. So you can tell that the the worm isn't just doesn't just finish at the ceiling. Uh, it goes up into the ceiling. Oh. Can we go up there? Well, it's it's a snug fit. Can we if pull we it out? Pull, yeah, and then climb through the, the hole. Yep. Uh, yeah. Who's going to tug on it? The strong <laughs> one. <laughs> I think okay. it was you two. L I think that, yeah, yeah. I'll, okay, I'll so that, yeah. Let's see, Micah and Grider. <laughs> go, Micah and Grider. The breather is just carrying I will help. You, you both I will help if my aid strength will be <laughs> okay. I mean, okay. I could add a mage hand and get like 10 pounds. Yeah, of yeah. Or, yeah, or, teamwork. Or Even, yeah, yeah mage hand will help. I rolled a 14 on my strength check. Okay. <laughs> it, it so that, that's good. If you'd, rolled, if you'd rolled too yeah. high, you end up pulling a leg off and, and Ica comes oozing out at you, but you... Mm -hmm. You just ease it out of the hole and it sort of starts to, as soon as it starts to move and lose its grip, it just gets all slippery and just sort of slithers out into a big uh, mm. coil of purple uh, worm corpse. Like a move from the side and vomits. <laughs> yeah, Wait, so there you go. Something... Yeah. Leaving you with, with this tunnel above. Can we climb up there? Is it very far? Uh, yeah, about f yeah. five, six, seven foot across. Is it and very is high it like up? vertical? Uh, no, no, it sort of twists a little bit. It's got a bit of a bend to it. You reckon it'll be pretty uh, easy? Before we go, uh, do I recognize this worm from any of my further uh, earlier uh, knowledge? Uh, you can roll a nature check. Have you. Okay, you recognise it as a juvenile purple worm. Juvenile. Does that Have mean you it's a baby? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's a twin. It's a twin <sighs> worm. Actually, have mm -hmm. you been in a in a creatures inside before? I don't believe so. <laughs> okay then. Okay, can we just can we climb up? Yeah, or do yeah we... let's climb up though. Let's go. That's more like an adult. Kill it. Kill it. Throw Kill it. it. Can we Kill toss it down the like esophagus? Can we just like haul it? Uh, can we go into, into, the, the, into, the, into the stomach acid? Yeah. Yeah. Just, no. I, I can't. While, uh, while we are thinking about it, yeah. uh, uh, how far do juvenile. Pink worms go from their parents. Um, just yeah, they, they don't. It's just its tongue. I think it's like some weird little. Yeah, you're not sure. You're not sure of the ecology of them. Are we in a freaking earth? Can giant? I? Do I oh. have to? Do I have to roll to get up on this ledge? Because I've been down here the whole time. No, no, no. You can you can climb up if you take Thank take you. your time and over the course of a minute, then you can make your way up. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to uh, speed you guys along. Um, after travelling through the tunnels above, 
um, the characters enter. Da, da, da. There's a glowing crystal. The side. Uh, yeah, there's a large room above. Now, hang on, I'll, I'll move you to it and, and show you. Okay, just revealing now. Okay. Are we in like a skull or something? Like, I don't, I do not know anatomy very well. Yeah, wouldn't it lead up to like the nasal, the yeah, nasal cavity? No, the thing is, yeah. you've, you've gone through an unnatural hole made by a purple worm and gotten into some other chamber. Oh, yeah. so we're like in the... We're in the brain. Yeah, we're in the brain cavity. Like this looks kind of spongy and like a. <laughs> can we do like? A, can we do a nature check to know where we are? Yeah. Ooh, looks that looks like, nice. Looks like you're in a cranium. Okay, is that where I am right now, my brains. Is that like a gemstone right there? Like, yeah, it is. is yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, but that little girl told me to like find the gem and give it to her. So like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the blind crazy, goat. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. The blind goat. A glowing crystal the yeah. size of a of a human head rests upon a rocky pedestal, dominating the center of a round domed cavern. Uh, the glow crystal strobes angrily at your approach, um, and arcs of electricity crackle on its surface. There's a freshly dug tunnel. Oh, don't move! Don't move yet, because um, there's because there's creatures in the room too. I just haven't haven't oh, well, I haven't revealed them yet. Uh, let's see. Um, there are scraping sounds emanating from the wall, and three quarters of the way around from the room, the entrance, the wall vibrates. Da -da -da. There's a freshly a freshly oh you can see the freshly dug wall at the other end. Um, there's a group of humanoids encircling this crystal, their faces smiling with ecstasy. Um, their apparent leader, a human in robes covered in plates of rock, kneels before the pedestal in the middle of the room and his hand is sort of reaching for it. And I'll, I'll put those characters in. Uh, let's see. Um. Can I ask? Can I ask Laika if they, if those humans resemble the girl she met? Uh, no, they don't. Do they? Don't. Okay. I was, I was just worrying that like the girl was like a spy or something. No, if she uh, really met this crazy girl, the crazy goat, you know, we don't even know if she's telling the truth. Well, the goat wasn't crazy; it was just blind. Oh. So. <laughs> There's yeah, no that makes more sense. That, um, yeah. Um, can I call out to them and like, um, I don't know, celestial? Okay. See if they understand celestial. Just, just bear with me a sec. Uh, objects and tokens. Right. So one looks. Look, the two of them look like. Um, Human-sized lizard men of some sort. And that, that's this. That's this. Oh, they're bigger than that. They're probably bigger than a human. Um, there's a guy in ropes. This this one here. So there's one that's kneeling at it, and there's a dwarf with goggles, um, standing off to one side as well. Well, we heard about that. The other guys that uh, these are the two people that Sergio and Tavern told us about. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What well, was it at that time? <laughs> In goggles. You guys, let's sneak attack them. Let's sneak attack them. <laughs> so we're just gonna kill. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, but, well, they may be friendly. Who knows? Laker, can you roll your stealth? You're up front. Oh, okay. 22? Yeah. And um, just, okay. yeah, so this will be the final encounter of the session. So um, when you said about 30 minutes, that's 30 minutes from now. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we should be fine. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. So um, you're up front and you can signal to your neighbours um, and you will get uh, surprised if you want to just go launching in and not talk. Uh, um, if anyone speaks any... primordial, the, the, the guy is speaking primordial. I think I speak that. Yes, I can speak that. Oh, okay. He's saying prayers to Ogamok, who is a evil... Um, primordial god of earth. Right. It's definitely an evil um, uh, aligned uh, earth cult. Okay, so I step up oh. and I speak in primordial, saying, "Oh no! Oh, oh god! We're, we'll... uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk to the guy worshiping to the." Yeah, uh, we're uh, going to uh, say that we are fellow worshippers and we were <laughs> caught, sent here with by the call of our, you know, God that we all believe in very much. <laughs> and I support uh, Laika in this action. Yeah, Laika, as, she's, as Trust is speaking, I think Laika's just going to fire off an arrow at one of them. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, uh, I want to support the one who is speaking. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> Grinder's just seeing this, just wants to uh, uh, guiding bolt this. <laughs> yeah, trust. Uh, yeah, Leica does not know what trust is saying, so she's just gonna fire off. What? <laughs> All right, I'll get everyone to roll initiative anyway because we should be going by whoever um, is first in the roll. Wow. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, I, know. Wow. I know they're a bit trigger happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, the dwarf is the last one. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're doing do some it. weird. They're doing some weird chanting. She needs the stone for the. She's going to become a cleric oh, of the blind to go. You know, she needs that that gem. <laughs> uh, can you once again remind me how to add me to the turn order? Sure, that's uh, Zashi. Click on your icon. Yes. Ten. Ten, four. If you right click on your icon, the add turn is at the top, but I've just done it. What did you roll? Ten. Ten. Okay. So I'll just sort descending again. Okay, Laika. Damn it. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to, might as well, because I have it, I'm going to cast Hunters. Which one's the guy that's chanting? Uh, this one here. The one in the red robes. Okay. I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark on him. Okay. Oh, so yeah. Green dot. In Hunter's He's mark. now marked by the ranger. I'm going to hit him. Okay. The longbow. Whoops. Nine hit. Probably. Oh, wait, no, 13, because it's advantage. Uh, it hits. He's not wearing armor. Okay. All right, so that hits, and then I do. So that's four plus four damage, and then another two. So that's ten damage. So I have hunter's mark on him. Okay, he's still got the hunter's mark. He can concentrate on that, and uh, um, he's taken some damage. Is that your turn? Uh, yep. Okay. Um, trust. God, I'm so sorry. Oh, so I am um, motioning wildly at you guys, like, no, trust me. <laughs> and I step forward, speaking in primordial, saying, apologies to the friends. <laughs> <laughs> but my gosh, you were. Okay. I know we shot you, but it was just a joke. I'll let like, I'll let you My roll. rash friends, we just had to fight a ghost. So my friends are a little bit jumpy, but we have been sent here by our fellow god that is the same as your god and would wish to speak with you. Okay. Something along those lines. All right. Um, the two lizard men sort of spin around and um, they don't look like they even understand common. Um, and they flex their packs at you. Um, can you roll a <laughs> can you roll a persuasion for the for the other two? Yeah. Oh. Eight. Okay. All right. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is 
so your surprise, this is a surprise round effectively. So your surprise round is blown from you know, trying to you know, smooth things over, calm things down, uh, but you can have inspiration for that. Oh, that you can spend at some point. Thank you. And I think that's your turn unless you want to move. Uh, can I just say that I have stepped forward? Okay. Like, I know it's not a great move, but yeah. I just said that I stepped forward. So okay. I, I'll have to Zashir. say that. Uh, I uh, uh, stand by trust and uh, with a stern face, I simply nod. Okay. <laughs> I don't do that. Enough. All right. She's a point. So you step up and say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, yeah. She, what she said. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to do the same for you. I'm going to, I'm going to give you, where is it? One and one. I don't like to dissuade just got launching into fights. I know this probably might be appropriate here anyway, but um, Cor Corral. Uh, um, what are you planning? Okay, so um, I saw that. So I, 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 I will go up to try and say, and turn and say, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you how it's done. Right. Yeah. Like, shoot <laughs> this guy. Oh, okay. I'll show you some some real persuasion, some real diplomacy. Okay, roll to hit you. And I do. Okay. And I hit for my longbow. What did you get? 14? Uh, is, is, is this with advantage or this or normal? No, just normal. 14. No, 14. Yep. Okay, uh, it hits. Damn it. Roll for damage. 8 plus archery. Okay. <laughs> Ten damage. Almost kills him. And not only that, but because I am so, <laughs> I like I see the situation and I'm like, oh my god, this is such a mess. And so I decide to use action, action search. Okay, so you can to try do it to, again. to to attack the guy again and try to just kill him. Okay. She's like, well, I need to, I need to fix this, I guess, I guess, because I'm not, because I'm not dying again. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so I go longbow. And I fuck me here because I. Hits again? Because, Same guy? Because I got to be a show off. Yes. And I. I attack. Okay. 9 plus 2. Okay. That's, the, that's, the, green, that that's the green lizard guy. Oh my god. Dead. He drops. <laughs> Two arrows, bang, bang. So much for diplomacy, am I right? <laughs> you know I mean, meanwhile. Huh. Okay, Corral, that was you. Grado. Uh, I'm going to move up to here. Okay. No. And, and, and attack that... that uh, the grey one? Yeah, I'm like, no. <laughs> this is how you do it. Warhammer. <laughs> Are you using and, and the then, roll, uh, are you Are you using the warhammer or the or have you, have you got the um, axe? I'm no. I'm I'm wielding my warhammer. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then I'm going to use my um, war priest ability to attack again, basically. Okay. So what uh, did you? Is the sixteen you rolled a hit? Was it? Uh yes. And you did what? Four damage. Four damage with it. And okay. so, just use that. So let's go normal. <laughs> Fourteen to hit. That's a hit. And eight damage. Oh, we're still there. Uh, that's fine. Okay. So this guy goes, um, and uh, he has no weapons. 
he just, uh, firstly, with one long claws on his on his uh, hands, uh, tries to whack at you, um, hitting armor class nineteen. Does that hit? Uh, on on Frodo, nineteen. On, yeah. Just hits. Okay. Um, da, 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 right. Doing six damage. His left hand swings around and does the same thing, missing. And w with that, he then snaps with a toothy maw and bites you as well, doing uh, hitting arm um, class 15. That's a miss, I presume. That's a miss. Okay. Um, and it absolutely reeks. You know that you couldn't really stand next to this guy for that long. Mm. Okay. Um, the little fella with the goggles um, goes to here and he pulls this like um, urn, a little, little uh, clay pot out of his hands and he throws it at you, Grydor. Okay. He misses. I have to roll a d20. Okay, it overshoots and lands about here. And when it bursts, um, three sturges that were sort of bottled up inside it come bursting out and go flying off to attack. Um, so you don't take damage from them, and it will have to be next round, but I'll put them in afterwards. Um, yeah. Lastly, this guy goes to here, mutters to himself, and this lizard man guy's wounds heal up. <clears throat> Laika. All right, I'm going to hit him again, the, the same guy that I have Hunter's Mark on. Okay. Does that an 11 hit? Um, 11 is a hit. You, you might have to move okay. two squares somewhere to, to get to him. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I'll move over here. Okay. And then I'm going to Mambo, fighting style, Hunter's Mark. Oof. Nice That's damage. So, yeah. So 13, 14, 15 damage? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, it's a big hit. He's still alive and still standing, but um, massive, oh. massive arrow to his torso somewhere. Big, big wound. Um, and that's that's it for you. Trust. Uh, can I do movement or anything? Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, move, so you can move a bit more if you want. Uh, uh, how much? Thirty-five feet of movement. So it's like. Oh. oh, you've moved ten to get there. So you've only got uh, oh, twenty left. Fifteen. Yeah. Uh, screw it. I'll move over to here. Trust. Um, can I just ask out of character what the name of the again? What the name of what, sorry? Um, the evil god. Um, Ogre Mok. Ogre Mok? Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm still clinging on to trying to make this situation oh my god. better. Um, you're, you're, so I'm... Mm? you're reading them now, you're pretty convinced that they are sort of fighting to the death at this point, or at least the um, lizard man is. <sighs> okay, I guess I'll just have... Okay, I will firebolt at the... <laughs> at this guy. The, lizard the, man? The okay. Lizard. okay, roll a hit. Sure. Nice. Two, two, nice one. Right damage. Now damage. Damage is four. Okay. Something, I guess. You're knocking him back down. He's not dead yet. Do you want to move? Um. Yeah. I'll... You can move up to six squares if you want. Yeah, I just want to stay behind the, the, oh, the yeah. dwarf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the big shield. So she yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Everyone's moved out of the way, Zashir, and you've got a clear line to all three of them now. Uh, 
I guess I will use my magic missiles on the lizard guy. Okay. So roll your 3d4 plus 3. So one. Go on, Two. Okay. And three. Oh, nice. Okay. Bang, bang, bang. Each one knocks him back a foot until finally he drops dead from the three of them hitting him. And right after that, uh, I yell very loudly, stop! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Corral. I think, unfortunately, okay. you've got Corral and Gridor to, that you're asking to stop, I think. Corral, what do you think? Uh, okay, so I am over here. Forever. Okay, Corral, yep. I'm over here, and I, and I, and I say, you... You fools! <laughs> My friend has been trying to to be to peacefully communicate with you. Okay. And for some reason, that probably has to do with like shooting you. You decided not to not to cooperate. Yeah. So and I and I aim my bow. Unless you want to to perish, I recommend I I recommend uh you. You stop fighting. Give up. Can I have okay. like intimidation or something? Yeah, yeah, go for it. You can have, you can have advantage on, on that. <laughs> oh, oh God! <laughs> and, and they look at me like you're you're right. No, you got it. I said you have advantage before you, you roll. Advantage on it because. Uh, okay. I have advantage. Luckily, what? L luckily okay. you got an eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't know what happens now. <laughs> okay, they raise their hands in the air. They surrender, okay. They, they surrender. And I, look up to I look up to trust. I always believed in your peaceful ways. <laughs> Except for the time I killed one of them, but that's, a, that's not important. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're very peaceful arrows. Okay. So... There are arrows of peace and tranquility. <laughs> I, I, you you will be, you will believe in your peaceful ways by force. Yeah, I can enforce peace. <laughs> Very good. By way of the bow. Okay. So, um, so I, is there you... any way? If, I, can I ask them if there's a way to? Yeah, so, I mean, so they give up um, and and uh, you're able to take them into custody um, and you find out, uh, just to cut a long story short, I guess, that they dug their way in um, and um, because, remember, you went down a long way, but then you also climbed up a lot of tunnels as well. So it's sort of come full circle. Uh, it's fairly close to the surface where they've come through. Um because they were seeking, you guys were seeking gold. They were seeking this seed of fell earth, this glowing crystal. Um, and so you're able to climb back out fairly simply through the tunnel that they dug. Um, that, uh, can uh, can Leica have like a stolen the gem or whatever? She like pockets the. Um, not not from the not from the party, but you because this thing is the size of a head, and everyone here is obviously. Um, oh no, but I mean, I think she's taking it with us. She's not like. What do you mean? Can she like try to take it from the thing and like? Oh yeah. I don't know, she's yeah. Have, have we taken it with us? Yeah, yeah. So you've got yeah. you've got some uh, fistful of these, uh, you know, quite a, a sack full of these blue crystals from the geodes. You've got a bit of treasure that you garnered from the um, the captives that you've taken, and the lizard men's sort of tre own personal treasure pouch. Um, you, you don't find a vein of gold, obviously, there's, there's something much nastier going on um, that's sort of taken the space these, of, uh, of this map. Uh, do these uh, guys know what the hell was this cavern with all the digestion? Oh, what? yeah, yeah, so Ogamok is the uh, god of evil earth, um, a, a, an evil earth cult, and... Um, this seed is like a almost like a shard of his spirit 
And so it's almost like um, you were running around inside him, or at least a uh, an earthly shadow of him. Um, so we got sucked up his anus and into his body. Pro well, so, so you got sort of swallowed into him, and then found yourselves just inside his, his inside him, the, it, where he was where he was forming. But remember, it's an earth elemental, not um, not organic. Um, Good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, you also get. And a bit what of, were they wanting the? What were they wanting this gem for? Um, I mean, they're just worshiping girl. it, or were they going to plant it? Yeah. Like, so the they, little girl evil. These, <laughs> these seeds, they believe, are ways to bring Ogamok into this world, which would allow him to then run ah. amok. Run amok. Uh, cause a Let's lot just of, leave this here. Cause a lot of destruction. Um, well, that's the thing is leaving it here, it's planted and, um, and it, it might be better given to those who can, I don't know, either destroy yeah, like, it. I guess it's your choice if you want to give it to the creepy girl with the goat. I mean, I feel like the blind goat's very, can I do insight to see if the blind goat is trustworthy? Uh, well, not now. <laughs> you have to, <laughs> we'll assume you, have, you, go, and, you go and the seek goat. them out. Um, okay. Can we roll insight on these two guys and what they are say, saying? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming this is under under protracted interrogation. Um, so it's, it's just sort of what you get out of them eventually, rather than just over the course oh. of a... Okay, of so a let's, 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 let's go. Yeah, yep. let's get out of I say we should uh, kill them just in case they will try to... I thought Say you something were not that will awaken. <laughs> so now you want to kill him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, now that they've surrendered, you want to kill I him. I believe let's respect what? trust wishes. Does a 15 hit that dude? Oh my god, why? <laughs> He's are strained, so it should automatically hit him, right? Yeah. If if you're a if you're a uh, yeah if you're a non if you're a good character. It would start to swing you the other way if you just uh, kill people. Uh, I'm uh, chaotic neutral. Okay. Uh, no, uh, she's neutral, uh, good, so a, maybe I won't. Neutral, uh, good, maybe I won't burn. As the cleric of the group, I uh, seriously am judging you guys right I, now. As the, as <laughs> okay, the, I, just, I don't, I don't, I don't murder the dude. As the moral <laughs> compass of the group, uh, Grider Grider counsels not to murder those. Who didn't actually do anything? They were just praying they, to their god. They, I say uh, <laughs> they surrendered. Yeah. Okay. I say all right, but so if they will betray us, so okay. you allow uh, me to kill them. Can we just take the? Can we all group take the? Right, or you're strong. Take take the crystal with me. Help me help me hold the crystal. Yeah. So you've got the crystal, um, and you you give that off to. Uh, I won't um, go into details about what happens with it. Um, that's outside of the realm of this adventure. Um, from an from an adventurer's leave perspective, anyone who wants to take a plus one battle axe and add that to their inventory can, so long as they've only got one magic item. You can't have more than one permanent magic item. Um, but I don't think anyone has one, but it's probably only Grydor that can use it. Um, mm -hmm. There's two potions that you score. Um, one is a potion of healing and one is a potion of growth. That was the one that felt really heavy. You drink it and you double in size oh. and, and mass. Um, and so you need to pick someone who wants either of those two potions to... to Because you can't... Um, they, someone needs to get the potion of growth, someone the potion of, someone the potion of healing. You also, when you divide up all the treasure, everyone gets 80 gold. And you can each gain a level if you choose to. Yay. Okay. Ah. Nice. And nice. That, yeah, and that means, you know, if you wanted to play these characters again, even in another Adventurers League one shot, you can take them. Uh, once you go up the level, you can't go backwards, but you can then, you know, go up to your third or fourth or second, depending on who you are. <coughs> And I know it's okay. just gone beyond. Can I, yeah. uh, can I take that uh, potion of healing? Or did someone already take it? Uh, yeah, no I one. didn't use the one we got anyway, so. 
I thought I, I think I grabbed the potion of uh, growing or something. Who's that, Lyca? Yeah. Okay. So if you've got the potion of growth, um, Federico is wanting the potion of healing. Um, any... ah, okay, I will give it to him. Oh, was it? Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm miss. I'm Hang miss... on one. Uh, it, it was Zashir who wanted oh, the sorry. potion of healing. Oh, yeah, so Zashir. Zashir is ah. get the potion of healing. Uh, Grider, okay. I guess you're... Can you use this plus one battle axe instead of your non-magical hammer now? I can. Yep. Um, yeah, because I'm proficient with uh, martial weapons yep. because of auto main. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and uh, that's the end of this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. If... If anyone is interested, um, I think I put it into the chat, I will be starting Rhyme of the Frost Maiden pretty much at this time once a fortnight, once it does come out. Um, and I don't have a full, you know, com like full party yet. It'll be running this ah. sort of thing, but that, I know uh, that. I've signed up for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's I'm a, down for it. Yeah. I'm down for it. Okay, is so, that once fortnightly, did you say? Yeah, I'd be playing once fortnightly at this time slot. We're playing Fortnite, oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 Where are we dropping, boys? <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, yeah, so let me know. Um, I can send you, like, while this is Royal Dog one shots, that I've got another uh, realm of, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden um, already advertised. And I think, Grydor, you're, you're the only one that's in there at the moment. Yep. Um, and I don't know but, um, what, what level you start at. Oh yeah, roll twenty. Yeah, it's roll twenty. Okay. If you actually type in Rhyme of the Frost Mode, and you pretty much only get my campaign come up, so I don't know what's going on there. Oh, so I should mention, I have to buy the module, and I've I've already bought the module and the roll twenty and the D and D Beyond one. Um, so I'm charging five dollars a session. So that might, yeah, have a think about it. It's, it's only the mm. one-shots that I'm doing free. Otherwise, there's more one-shots coming as well. And you can let me know. Um, okay. yeah, excuse me, but uh, that would be impossible because, for me then because let's just say the dollar is very expensive for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm not sure because uh, I will have a pretty chaotic uh, schedule at work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so there's all the one shots I, I advertise are always uh, um, free to give people though, that sort of chance. Um, and they're also because then it doesn't have to worry about work schedules and things because they're all one off. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so uh, keep if you're interested, um, the offers there, let me know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. In other okay. words, otherwise, I'm going to stop the Great. thing and. Do, do, do. <coughs> Kick out exit music. <laughs> if you tell, if you tell me earlier, that would be exploring a creature's penis. Yeah. <laughs> with a bunch of, with a bunch of random. Exactly. <laughs> I will believe you. I won't believe you, but. And you got killed by poop, basically. Yeah. You got rolled over by poop. <laughs> <laughs> you got splattered. Uh, twice. I'm... <laughs> I made up for that. I made up for that twenty with about three ones for initiative in the next three combats. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So right. Like the first, the first thing the party does after they leave, they take a peek, they take a shower. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Nice. You're all muddy, slimy, whatever. Ugh. It's been a a crawl, a slither. All right. Ugh. Um, <laughs> um, okay. I'm just stopping the re recording. Oh, yeah. So I hope to. Um, Hear from you all again, maybe in another set, another another one of the one-offs. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.